Our thanks go to sponsors and partners, without whom this event would not be possible. Funding partner, Sport England. Official partner, TIA. Endorsed product, Sport Systems. Host city, Marketing Sheffield and Sheffield International Venues. Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to Sheffield here in South Yorkshire and here at Ponds Forge, home of swimming in this part of the world. We're here for day number two of the Swim England National Winter Championships 2018. It is the season and all that. The swimmers are not really thinking about Christmas presents, though. They are in intense, heavy pre-season training but they are here at these Winter Championships to give their absolute all. They're busy warming up 
at the moment ahead of a fast and frantic evening's competition and a very good evening to all of you at home as well. Myself, Stephen Jameson and three-time Olympian alongside me, James Goddard, to take you through what should be, we're expecting at least, a very, very exciting second day of competition here. Day one, James, for those who perhaps didn't appreciate it and didn't take it in, was a bit of a belter. Yeah, it was, uh, it was corking. I mean, it was just so fast. I couldn't believe how quick it was. Um, I came here expecting maybe some heavy, sluggish swimmers, you know, maybe being a couple of seconds off their personal best, but we saw uh, world junior records, British junior records, and even the seniors, even the top seniors were smashing the heats to get to the final and then hitting the final just as hard as well. It's been sensational. You speak of these world junior records, let's put some respect on the name as it were. Kayla Sanchez of yep. Canada has come here as part of the invitational team of Canada to help spice up this event really and bring a bit of an international flavour, but goodness me, does this 17-year-old have some world-class potential. Yeah, 100 freestyle and 200 IM breaking the world junior record. And um, for those that don't know, if you break a world junior record, it's pretty much up there with some of the world's best times, um, you know, at a senior level. So she's absolutely smashing it. We've got her in a couple of events tonight. Um, can she do it again? She'll be in the 100 IM and the 50 freestyle tonight. Um, so we should expect some good things from her tonight as well. Yeah, potential for those as well. Let's take a little look at what's coming up tonight because there's plenty on the table for us. And let's take a look at this schedule. We kick off with the fastest tee of the men's 1500 meter freestyle. Keep a look out for Toby Robinson, Tom Darvish and Nathan Hughes, maybe even young Sam Budd in that one as well to look to win it. The 53 then follows. Kayla Sanchez has got competition from the likes of Emily Barkley, Emily Crane and Anna Hopkin from a British persuasion. The 100 breaststroke for the men looks to be James Wilby's event uh, as we've seen this morning and from yesterday in the 50 as well. But David Murphy could offer a bit of a stiff challenge. The women's 200 back then follows. Chloe Golding, Jess Fuller Love and Charlotte Evans are going for that one. Then an event I know you're really excited about, Jimmy, the, the, the men's 200 IM. Your old event, of course. This is it, yeah. Um, really fun event, actually, especially short course. Um, you can really kind of hit out with it. You know, lots of turns, lots of underwater work. Um, Max Litchfield has got to be the favourite for this one. I mean, it, last night in that 400 freestyle, 338, which is, which is astonishing, um, especially for a medley swimmer. Um, so he's on form. He's in great form. He's looking great. He's, uh, he's, he's looking big, strong, powerful. Maybe... He's had a little rest coming into this competition, it seems so. So, I mean, I've got the British record at a minute. Perhaps, perhaps he could take it down tonight. He's got to do a big personal best. Hopefully, you know, I, I, I don't mind people breaking records. That, that's what it's all about. Also in he the final as well. Cameras. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you want to keep the records for as long as... But anyway, but he's got his brother in there as well, Joe Litchfield, who uh, we can't write out. He's a really good no. uh, medley swimmer as it is. So we've got a bit of a brotherly rivalry in there as well with yeah. Joe Litchfield and Max Litchfield. Um, it should make for an interesting race. Women's 100 fly then follows. Keep an eye out for Marie Wattle in that one. 50 back, Nick Pyle, Thomas Howdle and Luke Greenbank. Three quality backstrokers going in that one. The 50 breast have already mentioned Kayla Sanchez. She was beaten, however, earlier on by Katie Matt and Imogen Clark, who won the 100 last night. So a little bit of competition there. James Guy will go in the men's 200 metres fly alongside Canadian Mac Dara, who was quicker than him this morning. That should be a really good contest tonight. And Holly Hibbert goes in the women's 400 metre freestyle. She looked imperious in the heats this morning. Then we'll round out the evening with some men's 100 metre freestyle. And in this one, it could be a bit of an international affair. Jordan Sloan and Yuri Casile, an Irishman and a Canadian, were the quickest through uh, this morning. And no one really got too close to them from a British perspective. But like we, like we always see, you can never really read too much into the heats. And then we see the women's 100 metre individual medley, Kayla Sanchez looked untouchable in that yeah. event earlier on. The only one to go under a minute and, like we say, nearly world junior record territory as well. We'll round off the evening with some men's 4x50 freestyle relay. So that's what's to come. Plenty on the way, as we mentioned. And we kick off the show tonight with the men's 1500 mid freestyle. That's the, uh, that's the first of tonight's races. As we see the officials making their way out, bit of a... Uh, Atmosphere added with those flames. We can actually feel the flames from here, can't we? Can yeah, you feel they, that? they are hot. They are hot indeed. And I know the officials are liking this as well because they would never, ever admit this in person. But this is a little bit of ceremony and a little bit of pomp. The swimming competitions. Uh, you might not think so if they disqualify you, but <laughs> that's what they're here for. Keep everything running smoothly, keep everybody within the rules and regulations. And of course, we've got to clap these guys on. And for those who didn't watch this competition maybe yesterday or indeed in the two morning sessions, James, 
this is a bit of a strange swimming event. It falls very weirdly almost in the swimming calendar because we are essentially in swimming pre-season, but yet we've got a national meet. So talk yeah. us through the dynamics of that as a, as a swimmer as we introduce our officials. Yeah, so I mean, winter usually is the heavy part of training. So the swimmers will be doing loads and loads of meters in the pool. They'll be lifting heavy, heavy weights in the gym. You know, so not much rest coming into this competition. Um, a lot of them will view it as a training meet, so they can come here and do some racing while they're hurting, while they're tired. Um, for you know, for a bit of confidence building maybe as well, but also for some mental toughness. So I mean, that that's why I was quite surprised just today with uh, how fast people were swimming. Today, I think with people being a little bit more tired, we saw a little bit more gamesmanship, a little bit more tactical racing. You know, from the likes of maybe Holly Hibbert um, and uh, James Willoughby as well down that last 25 of that 100 meters breaststroke. So. Maybe as the meet goes further on, they might start using those tactics a little bit more to, to, to give themselves a little bit of a rest into the finals and into that third day tomorrow. What we have seen, though, is very, very fast swimming in the finals, which, as you say, was perhaps unexpected because it's so difficult to race anywhere near your best whilst you're under that sort of training. I mean, swimmers, for those who don't know, usually have a bit of a taper before, before a race, a bit of no work whatsoever. These guys yeah. are probably in the gym in between sessions today. Yeah, possibly. Um, we don't get to race short course that much either, though, as a, as a nation. I mean, I, I think we should race more. So I used to love racing short course. I wish I'd done it more if I could go back. So maybe some of them may have, have had a little rest coming into this competition because they don't get to do it that much. So they get this chance. They may as well just take it and go for it and, uh, and, and try and do some good times. Yeah, it should be a real cracker. Let's talk a little bit about this first race tonight, then the men's 1500 yeah. meter freestyle. Some really, really talented swimmers in this one. Uh, Toby Robinson, Tom Derbyshire, yeah. Nathan Hughes are sort of three leading lights in it. But also, 15 year old Sam Budd is in it as well, who is very capable of putting together a very, very good swim and should not be discounted. Yes, yeah, I mean, it looks like it's going to be between between Tobias Robertson and Tom Derbyshire. They're the only two boys that have been under the 15 minutes, and they've been way under 15 minutes as well. So I would expect, it, if, if form is, is to, what to go by, those two will be out in front, maybe a little bit of a head-to-head -head battle, which will be great for a 1500. That's what makes it really exciting sometimes. When there's a head-to-head -head battle over a 1500, it can make it for a really exciting race. I hope the youngster, the 15-year-old lad, I'm, it, we'll have to I keep him on. I've done He's 20 years old. I read my writing wrong. I do apologise. Oh, but even word. so, 20 years old. Yeah. He's not done anything yet on a super national level. Oh, he Sam, is yeah, the outsider. Of yeah, Sam I mean, it's going to be tricky. I mean, I think it's going to be between these two. I've got Tobias Robinson and Tom Derbyshire down as, uh, as the two boys to look out for. In the centre of the pool, they're the only ones. That, then they've been way under 15 minutes. They've been 14.30 something. So it might be a good head-to-head -to -head between those two in that final. Yeah, we certainly hope so. We're seeing our swimmers being walked out. The minute. This is Nathan Hughes of Hatfields. Been a very, very dangerous swimmer through the youth years for a long time yep. now. And now as an 18 year old, he's got to make that sort of awkward transition to competing at the top at senior level, which is always so well, difficult. He's got, he's, he's got a really good lane there, lane three. You can see that he's, he's, uh, he's next to Tobias Robinson. So it's a great lane for the uh, the young man from Hatfield. It's a great chance for him to just try and battle and stick with, uh, with, the, with, with Tobias, who's been 14, 30 something, as I say, which is a pretty quick time for uh, a 1500. It's a great chance for some of these youngsters to stick with these top guys and really try and challenge them on this 1500. Yeah, there we see the lineup. The three in the middle is where we're expecting the winner to come, but you just never quite know. It's time to hand over to our race commentator, Jonathan Bell. To what these 10 swimmers can usually swim. Fastest off them, Richard Nagy of the city of Sheffield back in Manchester. That was 14.52.1. And the next quickest time after that this year was seven and a half seconds behind. And that was Toby Robinson who managed to record that a month ago in Stockport at the Stockport Metro November short course meet. But it's uh, certainly going to be an interesting one. And Steve touched on there in the build up on Nathan Hughes in lane three for Hatfield. So dominant in the youth events at this distance. And now he's trying to pit his wits against the two currently to his left hand side in the golden lanes, Toby Robinson and Tom Derbyshire. Yeah, um, Nathan Hughes going out quick. You can see him in that familiar pink hat of uh, Hatfield. Very iconic. I think this is a good way to do it for Nathan Hughes. His PB is, uh, his personal best time is 15.01.5. And the two boys next to him, Tobias Robertson and Tom Derbyshire, they're 14.30s. Tom Derbyshire, 14.33, and Tobias Robertson, 14.39. So some 20 or 30 seconds 
ahead of Nathan Hughes. And I think this is a good tactic for Nathan. I think he's got to get out there. He can't let these other boys get away from him early, otherwise it's kind of game over straight away and it's a real battle for the rest of the race. So he may as well get out quick with these boys, stay with them for as long as he can. And the longer this race goes on, the more confidence Nathan Hughes will get from staying with these boys who are a bit quicker. Going well out there in lane six as well is Samuel Budd from the city of Sheffield. If he can stick with them as well, that's that'd be a fantastic swim. Yeah, he's a very talented swimmer, is Sam Budd, but you always feel like it's because some of the rivals that are rivet in the pool, he's never been able to quite have the success he's uh, able to get. Nathan Hughes, though, is worth mentioning. He said that his personal best is 15.01, and, and that is quite a bit of the way of Toby Robinson's and Tom Derbyshire's PB. But actually, look at the times that Robinson and Derbyshire have been getting this year, and they're only just under yeah. 15. In fact, Tom Derbyshire's season's best, 15 on the dot. So Nathan Hughes isn't a million miles out of that, and it is sort of you've got them separate inclines and declines, if you like, and yeah. it's when you meet at the crossroads. Yeah, this is it, and it's um, it's tricky to know at this time of the year, you see, because, because it's winter and because this is the heavy training period, you don't know who's who's maybe had a little rest for this meet, you don't know who's been lifting weights this morning, you know, that's it, it, it could go either way, so sometimes uh, past form can go out the window, which can make for a more unpredictable, exciting race. But the thing is, with these 1500s as well, though, they're, they're so well conditioned that a lot of the time they can swim quick all year round, and you just wind them up and let them go. And they are machines, these 1500 meter swimmers. We're currently looking at that, the nearest out of the four swimmers that are leading the way. Nathan Hughes in the pink cap going in lane three. In lane four, Toby Robinson just slowly peering up the side there of Tom Derbyshire in the white cap in lane five, who is currently leading the way by a, a smidgen, 0.27 seconds, the difference there on the split. And Sam Budd is fourth out of that uh, quadrant, but he is uh, not too far away at all from uh, touching towards the front. We're touching off air as well, James, that you personally prefer swimming in the evening. When you've had, got an event like this, where five of the six heats have been swam in the mid-afternoon, and then you've got to wait that little bit longer to get in the pool yourself, how are you getting yourself psyched up for it? What's the preparation? How do you keep yourself occupied? Yeah, I mean, well, the, 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 these guys, if, if you've got a long wait before it's your heat, you, you, you know, you don't turn up to the pool straight away with everybody else who's competing. You know, you probably come a little bit later, maybe an hour or two hours later, um, do your warm-up in, uh, in, in, the, in the swim down pool. Um, and these guys will have practiced it a million times. You know, they'll know exactly the routine that they go through. They'll know the warm-up routine that they go through. You know what music they listen to before their race when to go up before their race you know they've done it enough times to uh to know exactly what uh what condition they need to be in and to prepare for before the race and it's uh you can see just as this race is, is developing it's tom derbyshire and tobias robertson as we kind of predicted that and maybe starting to make a move it's great to see nathan hughes from outfield you see him in that pink hat you can't miss him just staying on the feet of these boys He's got to hold on. He's just got to hold on for as long as he can. I think the longer he holds on, the better swimming he'll have. If he lets them go, he's, he's going to be stuck on his own in lane three there because lane two next to him is, is, is far behind. And if he lets these other two go, then he's going to be really on his own. He needs to try and stay on the feet of these lads. It's, I mean, it's easier said than done, obviously. Not my kind of event, this one, the 1500. It was, it was arguably my worst event, but coming from a competitive mindset... I think that's exactly what Nathan Hughes has got to do. He's just got to try and battle and stick with these boys. It's a long way to go, though. Well, this time last year, the uh, Swim England winter meet, of course, was long course, uh, with it being the Commonwealth Games trials. And uh, in this final there, it was Tom Derbyshire managed to get silver ahead of Toby Robinson, who had to settle for a bronze medal. Nathan Hughes, earlier on this year, here in Sheffield at the British swimming summer championships managed to get a gold in this event but of course in the summer you haven't necessarily got the lucrative national swimmers there because they're out internationally competing so it shows that Nathan Hughes if you like possibly can be the, the best of the rest in, in the short term and, and long term can then knock on the door to go even higher this is it yeah absolutely making a move here Tobias Robinson 
he's just trying to make a movie. And it's it's interesting the pacing on a 1500 as well. I remember the uh, the great Grant Hackett, um, Australian swimmer, multiple Olympic gold medalist in the uh, in the in the uh, 1500 freestyle, multiple world medalist in the 800 and 1500. There was a, uh, I remember a coach telling me about his tactics. He used to hit the first 500 really, really hard, take the next 500 a little bit easier, almost like a recovery. So he'd hit that first 500, use the middle 500 for a, almost like a bit of recovery, so he could hit that last 500 really, really hard and finish strong. And if, you, if you're racing against a swimmer who finishes fast, who finishes strong, and who finishes with confidence, it's almost impossible to beat them. I mean, look at the difference here between Toby Robinson and Tom Derbyshire. There's a lot of water coming from the feet of Robinson isn't there in lane four but Derbyshire is still quite conservative in his approach yeah it does seem that way it seems that uh, Tobias is maybe engaging his legs a little bit more than the other two lads but just interesting now it was maybe at the five or six hundred meter mark Tobias Robinson started to make a move and maybe that was his tactics for the first for the first 500 maybe just stay relaxed maybe stay a little bit more conservative and hang on the shoulder of the other two boys to the next to him and then at that 500 meter mark now let's make a move now let's try and blow these boys out of the water so maybe he's tacked himself at that middle 500 to hit it hard so then when you get to that last 500 he's built up such a lead that the other boys have been crushed well the gap at the moment between first and second is more or less a replica of what it is between second and third the front three definitely evenly dispersed at the moment in favor of toby robinson of Loughborough University and he of course with the uh, quickest time out of these 10 swimmers this year coming into this and he's trying to show that sort of form and uh, I wonder here you know how much has Nathan Hughes got an awareness of Tom Derbyshire a couple of lanes separate and is he able to keep tabs on him yeah he'll, he'll, he'll be able to see him I'm sure of it um, Nathan Hughes breathes to the right, so when he turns now, Nathan Hughes will be able to breathe to the right side and have a look over to lane five and see Derbyshire. Maybe that's just a little a little target, a little thing that you can keep hold of in this race, because if he lets him go, he really is on his own and it's going to be a battle for the last five or six hundred metres. We're on a short course as well, it is sort of organised chaos, isn't it, because it's half the size of the pool of a long course you do get a lot of swimmers that are almost lapping one another and, and surpassing each other at a lot quicker rate so you've got swimmers going in uh, all sorts of directions right now yeah Tobias has already lapped uh, a couple of people but he looks good Tobias looks good to be fair to him he's, he, he made that move and he's still looking strong and if anything he's moving further away from these boys that are either side of him he's looking at that pretty strong leg kick going in great condition though, though isn't he he must be in great condition to uh to keep this rhythm and keep this pace, keep that leg kick going the whole time. Breathing one in two as well. It seems to be the breathing pattern that a lot of the uh, ladies and gents like to do in these distance events and the short events, actually. He gets lots of oxygen into his system. It's something that uh, a lot of adults struggle with when they're learning to swim, actually. They struggle with their breathing and getting a good breathing pattern and getting into a rhythm really does help with the breathing and even for the seniors they've got to get that breathing pattern right and you see Tobias Robinson breathing to his left all the time a little bit different to uh, Nathan Hughes he breathes to his right all the time so it is, a, it is a preference for each swimmer whatever feels more natural it's not like the coaches will coach one way or the other it's usually a more natural thing feel for the swimmer we're well, past the uh, thousand meter mark now i mean just give us an insight james into how it physically feels you go on about that breathing but it must get pretty intense in there it's such a long distance your arms are burning yeah i mean how are your lungs feeling at this point yeah <laughs> well i'm not a 50 i did do a few 1500s in my time i was dead after 300 meters so these boys are incredible uh, i've got incredible endurance oh yeah i mean the lung lungs will be burning everything will be uh everything will be on fire but i mean these guys are in great condition so you know this is I, I won't say a formality, but they've done this a, a million times up and down in the pool in training. You know, they do pace work all the time. Uh, they might be, do a set like 3100s, hitting a certain pace. So they, so they do it over and over and over again. So when they get into a race, they know exactly what the stroke rate needs to be, their pacing needs to be, their leg kick needs to be, breathing patterns. And it's almost robotic for these guys now as they come down this final four or 500 metres. But yeah, they, yeah, they'll be hurting, there's no doubt about it. I mean, if they weren't hurting, they wouldn't be doing it right. 
And Tom Derbyshire in lane five. Still hasn't really gone with his legs yet, has he? Coached by uh, Dave McNulty. He's the University of Bath swimmer, but still quite reserved. And oh, I'm interested to see here how much he's got left in the tank because my guess would be he's got quite a bit. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I really think if he had a lot in the tank, he would probably stay with Tobias from the start. So, you know, maybe he's one of those guys that's, you know, University of Bath, they like to train hard um, this time of the season. I mean, we saw Siobhan looked tired this week, so maybe she's in heavy training and Tom Derbyshire at the same swimming club you know, might be going through the same sort of training re regime where, I don't know, I'm kind of just guessing at the minute, but uh, Tom Derbyshire's having a great, uh, um, a great little battle actually with Nathan Hughes. I mean, Nathan Hughes is stuck with Tom Derbyshire the whole time, but there they are turning together about half a second splitting the two so they should have a little good you know, a little good battle down this last few hundred meters for that silver medal spot well worth mentioning that there are uh, three lots of medals on offer all the way through the night of course you've got your gold silver and bronze but they come in the senior junior and commemorative medal categories there'll be no commemorative medals in this event as there are no foreign invitational swimmers taking part in it but still for those swimmers that are towards the back of the pool and those that have taken part in the previous heats of this event they have a chance of uh, perhaps getting a junior medal and in fact there are three 16 year old swimmers taking part here as well David A. Aroli of Millfield in seven Joshua Williams in eight and Alexander Hindle in nine and it's David A. Arioli who's winning the battle out of those three currently on the uh, far side of your screen but the focus very much is down the centre on Toby Robinson of Loughborough and uh, I mean with every single length here James, it, it seems like it's his, and he's not going to lose it. Yeah, his tactics were to go out comfortable down the first four, 500, and then progress through this 1500 and pull away from the rest of the guys. He's got really nice freestyle, actually, Tobias Robinson. If uh, if anyone's watching and they're struggling with the front crawl technique, just have a little look at, especially at his underwater work and the long reach that he gets at the front of his stroke. He holds that stroke at the front to get the catch before he starts the pull. A lot of swimmers I see now doing freestyle, they pull the water to it, you can see a long reach at the front, hold, get the catch, then you do your pull. You don't need to pull the water, in fact you shouldn't pull the water straight away. Long strokes, there we go, long glide at the front, holding that water. Keeps him nice and high and streamlined as well. Well, a bit of a battle happening now, you can see in three and five there, the pink cap of Nathan Hughes almost was uh, on the verge there of pipping Tom Derbyshire to second spot temporarily. It seems like Tom Derbyshire has just cranked up a gear though to try and stave off that attack. But I don't think any attack is possible here to lure in Loughborough's Toby Robinson who gets the bell for the final 50 metres. And this is his to lose well and truly. It's all about time really for him now. Yeah, he's gonna go, he's gonna go on, sorry, he's gonna go in the 1430s here. 1430 something, maybe 1437 if he can finish strong. 14, 38, 39, somewhere around there. So that's a really great swim for uh, Tobias. Timed it well as well, didn't he? Paced it really well. Stayed with those boys down that first four, five hundred, and then blew them away with his pace. Well, it's comfortably the best time that any British swimmer has done this year. And short course of 1,500 metres, 14, 39, 8, 4, the winning time for Tobias Robinson. And look at that battle there between Hughes and Derbyshire. It's Hatfields, Nathan Hughes who has managed to get second spot by four hundredths of a second, which over such a long distance is remarkable, and a testament really to him and Tom Derbyshire for sticking at it all the way through. But that is fantastic stuff between those two. Sam Bird as well, and Luke Turley very close for fourth and fifth. But Tarias Robinson is the winner. Nathan Hughes second, Tom Derbyshire in third. Yeah, great swim from Nathan Hughes from Hatfield. Big shout out to those guys. I know those guys work hard at Hatfield. Uh, with those pink hats on, very recognisable. Nathan Hughes, never been under 15 minutes before. 15 minutes, 0 0.01 was his PB. Oh, sorry, 15.01.50, and he's just gone 14.48.50, so some nearly 12 seconds under that 15 metre mile. That's a huge swim for Nathan Hughes. It really is. Tom Derbyshire getting his best swim of the year as well by uh, around 12 seconds also, but uh, roughly about 15 seconds away from his PB. But uh, Tobias Robinson will be very happy with that swim. The man in lane four kicking off the Saturday night session here in Sheffield in superb fashion with the best British short course time of the year in the men's 1500 metre freestyle. So it's Tobias Robinson 
from Hatfield's Nathan Hughes. Tom Derbyshire of University of Bath anchors the top three. Robinson, top of the podium. Terrific race then from Toby Robinson. Welcome back to the studio. Stephen James and James Goyle here to analyse that one. That's some swim. It really was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, great swim. Timed it perfectly as well. You could see for the first four or 500 metres, it was Tobias, it was uh, Tom, and it was Nathan uh, in a line, wasn't it? The three of them. And then Tobias just seemed to turn on an extra gear at about four or 500 metres. You could see his tactic was to go out nice and calm, nice and relaxed, and then four or 500 metres, then start to turn on. You could see his legs start to engage. He started to lengthen that stroke out, and he just dragged himself away from that rest of the front pack. Yeah, brilliant race from Toby Robinson. A big congratulations to him. Always nice to win such a long event, isn't it? To get to the end of the ring and know that you've got that under your belt. Time to move on to our next sort of event, though. Let's take a look at the women's 50-meter freestyle. This should be an absolute belter, and we've got to take a little bit of a... We've got to really put some anticipation here on Kayla Sanchez, the Canadian who yep. has been a real star at this event already as part of our international guest. 17 years of age, and... Uh, She's in the A final. This is the start list for the B final. But uh, Kayla Sanchez has, has been a real star. And for, for these youngsters, quite a few of them are sort of the up-and-comers of the, of the British swimming scene. Someone like Kayla Sanchez has to act as an inspiration, doesn't it? I mean, I mean absolutely. It's, I mean, it's an inspiration for everyone. She she's, she's really has been a breath of fresh air over, over here, hasn't she? Um, and she's, she's blowing everyone out of the pool. Um, so, I mean, she's got to go 24-0-0 is the world junior record, which is what we're going to be having a look at tonight because she's already broke two of them, so why not more? Um, and we maybe expect more, but Sanchez has been re really fantastic. And what I've been really impressed with, 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 with Sanchez is that how confident she is behind the blocks. Every time she walks out, she's got a smile on her face. I mean, why wouldn't she? But she's got a smile on her face. She looks, she looks relaxed, even though she's in a foreign country in a different pool. She just looks at home here, and she's swimming like she is as well. Yeah, it should be a brilliant watch. And we've got three very talented British swimmers in there alongside her as well. Emily Barkley, Emily Crane, Anna Hopkin, all very capable of perhaps causing a little bit of an upset. Kayla Sanchez has got a lot of races to focus on, yep. and it would be easily forgivable for her to maybe just slip in one of them. She can't be perfect all the time. Yeah, if our ladies want to challenge Sanchez, they've got to have a great start. You've got to have, because Sanchez is, is a very, very skillful swimmer. Um, she's got great, she's technically superb, she's got great starts, great turns. Her underwater is superb. So our British girls, we've got to have great starts, we've got to have great turns. And if we can hit that underwater as well, basically we've got to have a perfect race, right? I mean, I'm <laughs> kind of making yeah. that point. But we've got to have great starts, we've got to have great turns, especially in this 25 meter pool, if we're going to challenge Sanchez. Here we go, then we start with the B final. So this is the best of the rest in this event, the women's at 50 meter freestyle. Zoe Bozard Hill was 11th out of 20. She didn't quite make the cut, but she leads the way in the B final. She comes through as the favorite. Jasmine McCray, Victoria Diona Bagheli will give her some stiff competition. It's over to our race commentator for the second time tonight, Jonathan Bell. Well, the B final is always the uh, curtain raiser of an event and an evening session. Last night, they did not disappoint as well. And predominantly featuring some of the uh, more junior swimmers taking part over the course of the weekend. But Zoe Bozard Hill, 22 years of age, quickest out of the swimmers taking part in this race from the morning with a season's best of 25.85. She's the one to beat as they make the turn at the halfway point. And as you can see, down the centre, there's just a straight line here, gunning for goal, coming in towards the red zone. So difficult to call here. It could be five, six or seven getting the first touch. In fact, it is those three managing to get the top three positions, but not in that order. Emily Hames of Mount Kelly, 25, six, seven, has pulled out a brilliant time for her that it's a PB as Kira Tomasello claimed second spot and Jasmine McRae of Poole in third position. Some really strong times, around uh, 0.16 away from the uh, English record that time there from Emily Hames of Mount Kelly. Brilliant stuff from her in that B final. Yeah, Mount Kelly having a great weekend so far. Um, they've been tweeting away, uh, they've been really supporting their swimmers, and the swimmers have been delivering as well. They had a, a good um, relay team last night, picking up a medal. So we can see the swimmers are uh, doing best times tonight as well. So big up Mount Kelly, keep the good work going almost an English junior record there not quite though as we build up now for the A final and of course we keep mentioning Kayla Sanchez she uh, wasn't the quickest this morning it was Anna Hopkin of Ealing in lane four with a personal best of 24-1-3 but you look at Kayla Sanchez's PB and that is a junior world record of 23-9-4 so almightily stiff competition 
for the rest of the pool there to try and claim top spot. But of course, it's whoever finishes top out of the English swimmers that will get an English gold medal, of course. Kayla Sanchez on course for a commemorative, but really, we are looking for that junior world record. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm a little bit confused with the junior world record, actually, because it has got Sanchez's personal best as 23.94. And I've, I've had a look at the confirmation on the, on the, on the internet. It's 24.00. Now, maybe she did that 23.94 a non uh, a non-sanctioned meet, I'm not sure, but on the uh, official website it says 24.00 is the world junior record. Well, let's hope she goes out there and uh, swims 23.9 and avoids any confusion at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, let's just say, yeah, 23.90, please carry her, and then, uh, yeah, it's a guarantee. But she went 24.20 this morning. She was fast as well, as well. That's Fast and Anna Hopkins went quick as well from Ealing 24.13. Should be a good little race actually. I think it could be close. I think it could be tight. Yeah, quite a few PBs being given out this morning, including Sophie Yendel, who we're about to see now, the City of Derby swimmer. She got 25.77 this morning. Gold at the British Swimming Championships. Long course, of course, that was earlier on this year. That was in the 16 year race group. And it's good to see quite a few of the youngest swimmers in this, the youngest of them is uh, Macy Lawrence of Mount Kelly in lane 7. 15 years of age, PB for her earlier on today of 25.71. But, uh, I mean, you're looking at the big guns now. Emily Barclay is the quickest British swimmer of the year in this short course format for the 53. 24.51 uh, is the time that she got here in Sheffield a month ago at the Books event. PB for her of 24. 5-1 as well so earlier on she was a bit off that 0.21 seconds away we'd expect Barkley, Clifton and Hopkin to be flirting around Kayla Sanchez but I certainly on the Canadian to the left of your screen there in all black in lane 5 yes yeah, she's going to be close I think Anna Hopkins she needs a good start I think she has a good start she needs a good start she needs to nail it tonight in this final hit that turn as well Sanchez's uh, underwater work is superb so keep an eye on Sanchez Well, this one will be over like a flash. The women's 50 metre freestyle, a final. Athletes and coaches, remind you not to bounce the balls at the front of the stand. Like a few distractions going around on pull side. The swimmers very much in the zone for this one. But now we are set to get underway. That's a strong start as well from Kayla Sanchez of HBC Ontario. Really lingering under the water for a significant amount of time there, but Anna Hopkin as well has matched the stripe for stride at the halfway point, and this turn here is crucial, and it does look as if Anna Hopkin has just got the upper hand coming in towards the red zone now, and this is an almighty battle between the two of them coming in towards the wall, and the touch is Anna Hopkin, 23.7, a fantastic time from her. Kayla Sanchez with 23.98 is uh, unable to break the junior world record of 23.94 we've got down, but she does break the 24-second barrier, so that will need ratification. Emily Barkley in third position from Loughborough University, second out of the English swimmers, and Katie Latham in third. So the time there from Kayla Sanchez, James, is really the one we didn't want. It's in between 23.94 and 24 seconds. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I mean, we, we, we need to get that. We need to get that checked. Um, it's a superb time, isn't it, from Kayla Sanchez? But what a swim from Anna Hopkin as well. Oh, look at that. She's won by 0.28 a second. That's quite a lot over a 50. But what a start she had, Anna Hopkin. I mean, I thought Kayla Sanchez would, would be ahead, but Anna was actually just maybe half a head ahead at the 50 meter mark. And a great turn from Anna as well. So she's got some fantastic skills and she put a great swim together. 0.43 second improvement for Anna Hopkin. 22 years of age on such a short distance. That is phenomenal. Yeah, it was a really good swim. It's, it was, I mean, to, to, to compete with Sanchez, we knew that somebody had to put a great 50 together, and that includes the start and the turn and everything in between. And Anna Hopkin nailed it tonight. She did a great swim, fantastic start. She looked smooth and powerful through the water and had a great finish as well. 
Well, that was brilliant stuff there, and hopefully we'll be uh, able to hear from her very shortly indeed. As we just digest the results from that one very shortly, Steve and uh, James will be uh, talking through that and getting some post-swim reaction there. But uh, a cracking final, one that we built it, it up quite largely. And we said how important it was to really get a perfect race, and Anna Hopkin did that, the Ealing swimmer, doing terrifically well and managing to win that women's 50-metre freestyle final. Yeah, we will get that ratified. It's, according to my notes, that's a world junior record. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's an incredible swim from Keda Sanchez. And it just goes to put into perspective what a swim that is from, <laughs> from Anna Hopkins to get the win. It was, it was superbly yeah. quick, wasn't it? Yeah, she needed a great start. She needed a great turn because we know Kayla Sanchez has got those skills in a locker and did Anna deliver. She was superb. A, a fantastic start. If anything, she came up ahead of Kayla Sanchez. And even on the turn, she was round that wall really, really quick. I think Kayla Sanchez may, might have stayed underwater that split second too long because Anna, Anna came up first, she started to get into a stride, into that quick arm freestyle that she's got, and Kayla stayed under the water a little bit too long, so Anna Hopkin got a little bit of a, an edge on her there, and a superb finish from Anna as well. Great swim. You said it there before the start of the race that to win, one of the English girls would have to be perfect, and yeah. that's pretty much what Anna Hopkin did there. That was, a, she couldn't really have done much more than that. Yeah, yeah, great start, great speed in the water as well. She's got that straight arm freestyle, nice, long, powerful stroke. Um, really quick turn up, she's got some natural twitch, hasn't she, about her. Um, great turn, super turn, and nailed that finish as well. Yeah, spot on. Yeah, we're still waiting for confirmation. We will get it to you when we do know. But uh, certainly according to my notes, that is a uh, World Junior Records uh, from Kayla Sanchez. That's the sort of times that she's swimming and really, really terrific stuff. Our next event here is the uh, men's 100 meter breaststroke. We start as ever with the, uh, the curtain raiser, as, uh, as Jonathan called it before, with the B final. And Neil Redman was quickest through in this one in lane four. Samuel Neal and Robert Cowley will try and give him some kind of competition. Keep an eye on Yaron Gerber in lane six too. He is very, very quick over this sort of distance. So then it is time to hand you back over for the B final of the men's 100 metre breaststroke to our race commentator, Jonathan Bell. Well, surprisingly for this one, four PBs earlier on today, and uh, usually the B finals have been littered with swimmers who have managed to get their lifetime best. However, the average edge of this one higher uh, than normal. There aren't too many juniors knocking around in this. Main one, Oliver Turbiner, is uh, 17 years of age, and Shavrako. The black off in lane two is at 16, but the rest of them really 18 and above and looking to try and hit their peak performances here. Neil Redmond, Portsmouth North Sea, the eldest in the pool, 24 years of age, and it's his season's best of 101.59 that gets him in the fastest seeded lane for this. Yes, but these guys will be uh, looking to get under that minute mark of 28.67. Not bad first 50. They need to keep this pace high if they're uh, going to get under that minute marker, which is uh, such an important barrier as a breaststroker, especially short course. Getting that minute is uh, such a confidence boost, and it's going to be between lanes four and five. Redmond will be Cowley in the last five metres on the touch. And we'll have it there, Neil Redmond. Portsmouth will see 101.23. Yeah, season's best as well for Neil Redmond, so one of the swimmers yet to break that duck at the 60-second barrier. Robert Cowley then, second position, 101.55. And uh, in third spot is uh, Samuel Neal of Reckin. They did manage to get all three of them under 102. But they'll be wanting to uh, chop a second or so off of that in future. As we get the ratification of those results there, it's from Redmond, from Cowley, from Neal in the men's 100 breaststroke B final. Yeah, really nice swim that from uh, from the man there in the middle lane. Now, before we head to the 100 metre breaststroke final, which will feature James Wilby alongside Edward Baxter and David Murphy, we're going to speak to the lady who, not sprung an upset, that would be an unfair, but really had one phenomenal swim to take down Kayla Sanchez in the 50 metre freestyle. We can cross live now to Anna Hopkin. Uh, Anna, first off, uh, huge congratulations. That was a really, really good swim and an even better time. That first. Bear with us, Anna. So, really good swim and a really good time as well. How do you feel? Um, 
amazing. Like, I was hoping to go 23, but to go 23-7, I could not have expected that at all. Yeah, it seemed like uh, Kayla Sanchez was hot on your heels. And we know she's got great skills, great starts, great turns. Did you feel like you had to put the perfect race together to beat her tonight? Yeah, definitely. My turn wasn't ideal this morning, so I knew that was something I had to work on. And I think it was a lot better tonight. And um, I couldn't really see her when I turned because I turned the other way. So it was just get my head down and get to the wall. Well, you certainly did that pretty well. I know this is an event you love to swim. In, in terms of swimming at this time of the year in the winter, this must fill you with so much confidence out of 2019. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, the main goal is long course. So I've just got to hope that it translates well to that. But this gives me a lot of confidence for next year. Awesome, yeah. Um, so, yeah, big year next year. Um, are you in heavy training right now? Yeah, I've had quite a big season. I'm in America at the minute, so I've had a lot of racing, uh, short course yards, and then I had US Nationals a few weeks ago, and then obviously had this. So it's been quite a tiring season so far. Must be looking forward to Christmas and the New Year. Do you get any downtime, or are you keeping it pretty intense? I'll definitely still be training through Christmas, but obviously I'll have a couple of days off and have a chance to celebrate with family and friends. You've got to treat yourself. You've certainly earned it. Fantastic swim tonight. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, Anna Hopkin. Well, James, absolutely spot on there. It's incredible to think that under so much weight of workloads, you know, she's been over to America, swam out there. You know, competition in America, as we know, at that sort of level is intense. Yeah. To put yourself under that sort of pressure and then to come here and pull out a swim like that, she wanted 23, she got 23.7. I mean, yeah. you've got to be so happy. Yeah, sometimes you just have one of those swims where it's just better than you expected. And it's, that's what it seems like. You know, she noticed that she had a bit of a poor turn this, this morning. And we noticed tonight she had a great turn. So she's obviously gone away. She's a smart girl, obviously. You know, she's, she's very professional. The way she spoke then, she knows a lot about her swimming and what she needs to do to compete at the top, top level. And she, you know, she, you know, she signified that her turn was bad this morning. She got in the pool tonight, executed an amazing race. So uh, well done to her. Very professional. Um, I hope she comes back next year and smashes it um, in that. She talked about long course, obviously, for the World Championships. Hope she comes back in, uh, in uh, the trials and smashes yeah, it. Yeah, she was British champion in 2017 over long course. Not as good a year last year for Anna Hopkin, but hopefully, as, as James mentioned, and as Anna mentioned herself, hopefully on the uh, the comeback trail with some brilliant times this winter. Now, time to focus on our next race. This is the men's 100 meter breaststroke A final. Some real, real contenders in this one. Led, of course, by James Wilby, who himself has had a wonderful year this year. If you watched yesterday, you'll have seen him win the gold medal in the 50 meters breaststroke, as well as performing very, very well. He's not traditionally a 50 meter swimmer, Generally with James Wilby, the longer the race goes, the more happier he is in the breaststroke. 100 metres though, he looked excellent this morning. And he's got competition in this one outside of him. Do not rule out a win for David Murphy, who looked very, very quick this morning. And uh, the City of Oxford will certainly give him plenty metres breaststroke of final. competition from David Murphy. It's time to hand over to James our commentator, Jonathan Bell. Yesterday. He's going for the treble this weekend, isn't he? He's going for the 50, 100 and the 200. A 200 metre specialist, really. So after winning that 50, I think there's only one outcome tonight. And after some challenges from David Murphy and Edward Baxter either side of him. But uh, James Willey, 57.81 this one. That's the season's best and a personal best. So he is right on form. Someone's going to have to do, very, do something very special to challenge the Commonwealth champion. Okay, he's in great shape, isn't he? Yeah, James Wilby. There's a six-pack there, is there? There's an eight-pack. <laughs> he's timed as well. We'll see about that on Boxing Day, but uh, James <laughs> Wilby's <laughs> time earlier on this morning was the fastest of any, any English swimmer in 2018. It's actually a year tomorrow since Adam Peaty set the European record, 55.94 in Copenhagen. But in terms of this calendar year, James Wilby is the fastest Englishman over 100 metres breaststroke in a short course format. So they get underway and uh, James Wilby was well clear of everyone else this morning. I think it represents as well, doesn't it, James, the fact that a swimmer like James Wilby is coming to this event here in Sheffield and he's really putting the foot on the pedal. Yeah, uh, yeah, and if that, uh, I guess that was his plan from the start. Come here, win the 50, win the 100 and win the 200. Uh, and why not? And why not right before Christmas and the New Year, where he can uh, he can maybe have a few days off? But it gives him that confidence for the next couple of months to hit training hard and 
get himself prepared for the trials next year. And he's, you can see he's come here to race hard, hasn't he? Yeah, it's a fantastic start from him. And David Murphy in lane five, you can see, is just trying to tow himself up along with him as well, the 19-year-old. A 59.01 for him earlier. He can go quite a bit quicker than that, at least half a second. And he will do here. And he's really using James Wilby as a marker coming in towards the final throws of this one. An eye on the clock, certainly an eye on James Wilby touching in. 57.61 even seemed to ease up at the end, but still is two tenths better than the PB he got this morning. James Wilby, superb stuff there. Second spot, David Murphy then, 58.19 and 59 on the dot for Edward Baxter of Loughborough. Yeah, nice swim. Nice swim from these boys. I, I was impressed with David Murphy there. He had a great start at the City of Oxford swimmer. He was actually ahead of all the other nine swimmers when he came to the 15 metre mark. James Wilby's swim speed though, superior. And gets him the victory, 57.61. There's the official results up on your screens. Wilby, then Murphy and Baxter taking the top three positions. Word as well for Oliver Crosby of City of Sheffield there, managing to get fourth position the first time he's broken the minute barrier. The top four all getting PBs in that race. And uh, I think that really does emphasise just how important this, this meet is for these swimmers. Yeah, definitely. And it's, you can see uh, Oliver Crosby, City of Sheffield swimmer, his personal best was a minute point zero six, And now he's broken that minute barrier. That is huge for the young man from the City of Sheffield. Big barriers to break and he's, he's finally done it. Yeah, nice to do it in his home pool as well. So you can see the uh, backstroke ledgers are in place, ready for our next event very shortly. The women's... 200 meter backstroke B final and uh, of course the A final to follow after that one it's uh, another great lineup we will have on the way for it and we'll just cross back now shortly to Steve and James in the build up for these two 200 meter backstroke finals yeah thank you very much John it's uh, it should be a really, really interesting race, this one, the, uh, the 200 metre backstroke. We start with the B final, naturally. And, uh, in terms of the A final, James, we're looking at Chloe Golding, Jess Fuller Love and Charlotte Evans, all three of them really close to each other earlier on and gave a really, really good account of themselves to the point where we have absolutely no idea who's going to win. Yeah, it's going to make for a great race. I mean, Jessica Fuller Love's got some great underwater work. I'm going to keep my eyes on Honey Osrin, who we mentioned this morning. She got like six seconds off her best time. She was in at, like entered at 2.16 and she went 2.10 this morning. So massive personal best from Honey Osrin. I'm going to keep a little lookout for her. Um, superb swimming this morning. Um, but yeah, who's going to win this? I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really not sure. It's going to be between those three girls. Um, I'm going to pop my money on Jessica Fuller Love. I think she's got the... Uh, I think she's got the skills and the experience to take this down. And she's the fastest qualifier from the heats. Good underwater work, good turn. So let's see how we get on. Yeah, we certainly will. Before that, though, it is the uh, B final. Jessica Shaw, the quickest through in this one as we head back to Jonathan. And again, a great mix of uh, the youth talent and also some of the early seniors as well that are beginning to break through. 14-year-old Izzy May Rees of City of Sheffield lines up in Lane six here, PB for her this morning of 2.13.48. Now trying to lock her horns with uh, teammate Lily Bosley next to her in lane five. And also favourite for this one, Jessica Shaw of University of Birmingham down the centre in lane four. Season's best earlier on today of 2.12.14 for her. And how close to the uh, 2.10 mark we can possibly get out of these swimmers. Jessica Shaw leading after the uh, first 50 metres, the only split under 30 seconds there, 29.87, Lily Bosley and Izzy May Rees, a strong start for her. And uh, she's just trying to keep herself up towards the top three, most of the pool pretty even, but you can see down the centre, it is uh, Jessica Shaw leading the way. There's quite a symmetrical look to the pool right now, and, and that says to us it's going to form. Yeah, Jessica Shaw having a good heat swim this morning. Uh, to 12. 0.14 season's best she has been to 10.82 so maybe she's saved a little bit for this final and uh, she's having a, a good first 100 meters that's 62.96 that's pretty good down the first 100 meters if she can come back in maybe 65 66 she'll get under that 210 which i'm sure is going to be what she's aiming for good challenge though as well from lily bosley 
Their personal best is 210.13, so uh, actually the, uh, the fastest personal best time out of all these uh, ladies in this final. Well, into the final quarter of the race, it's the Sydney Sheffield swimmer in lane five, Lou Bosley, that is now leading the way, and she's slowly inching forward, and you can see here with each and every stroke that it is her managing to assert a dominance over Jessica Shaw. Really good swim. Yeah, maybe Jessica Shaw went out a little bit too quick. I mean, maybe she just took that first 50 metres a little bit too much on the legs, and it's uh, she might be paying for it, but, oh, you know, Lily Bosley, let's not take nothing away from the City of Sheffield swimmer. She's timed this perfectly, and with his back 50 metres, you can see that stroke rate up, going up and up and up, and she's going to... Touch the wall in under 210 here, which is the first time she's ever going to do that. 209.90, just under by 0.1 of a second. She'll be pleased with that. She will be absolutely this delighted with the City of Sheffield swimmer. Second place going to Sophie Shaw of Mid-Sussex. And it's her namesake, Jessica, who gets third spot. Not too far behind her either. But a great swim from Sheffield's very own Lilla Bowes. You can see the team steal on the back of a cap there and it's certainly a steely performance to get her home and get that time of 209.9 of course it's not necessarily the case of if you win a beef final you're going to get a medal because it is all about them junior medals the senior medals and the commemorative medals as well and one thing we touched upon last night James and you did with Steve as well is some of the the sights you see when you get the junior gold medalist along the the likes alongside the likes of James Wilby or, uh, or the like who have got such international experience you yeah. can see the delight you can see the pride and you can see maybe as well that's a, something to spur them on to keep on going yeah for sure and it's a great picture as well you know got mums and dads in the crowd so they can take a picture of you know standing next to james guy or you know standing next to even sanchez and you know this this foreign superstar from canada who's come over and lighten up this pool it, it, it's a great picture and it's a great inspiration to you know to stand next to some of these superstars and you know hopefully what these students will be thinking like oh, i want to beat these guys one day i really want to beat them one day um which is exactly how i was thinking when i was a kid and uh i'm sure these juniors will be thinking a very similar thing so that rounds up then the uh, b final but the a final is to come and we can preview that in a bit more detail now we've got in in the main senior english swimmers but there uh, is the canadian in there hannah henderson as well in lane two 16 years of age and she was part of the junior pan and pacific championships earlier on this year pb earlier of 209.9 and a pb a season best should i say as well for jessica full of of university of bath and that time of 206.9 was the third fastest of any British swimmer this year. But the fastest of them this year has been Chloe Golding, but she starts in lane six. Yeah, she's the season's best of 206.61, and that's her personal best, so she's having a good year so far. Maybe she was saving something in this heat, you know? Maybe she was just kind of... Here's Honey Osrin, by the way, you know, it's a fantastic one of my swims of the morning, if not the swim of the morning for me. This young 15-year-old from Plymouth Leander knocking six seconds off her best time to make this final. Got from 2.16 to 2.10.63. I'm sure if she had a good chat with her coach, the Plymouth coach, and uh, I think 2.10, under 2.10 is going to be uh, something that she's thinking about in this final. Well, we talk about Honey Osrin being 15. In lane nine, we've got Kenton Ebbage of Tunbridge, 13 years yeah. of age taking part in this A final. Yeah, that's, that's, that's seriously unbelievable. 13 years old. And she came, she came second in the summer nationals for 13, 14 years. Oh, she managed, she's a year down, yeah, oh, well, unbelievable. So, yeah, that's brilliant. 212, 212 0 for a 13-year-old is unbelievable. Let's keep our eye out on her as well then. She, she did a personal best and a season best. We don't, have to, we don't have to really talk about season's best with the girls that are 13 years old. <laughs> if it's a PB, it's a season's best as well, yeah. So she went 212.07. That's Caitlin Ebbage from Tombridge Swimming Club out there in lane nine. 13 years old, that is that's fantastic. Well, certainly uh, keeping out for her in terms of the bout for the junior gold medal because she'll be up against the likes of Honey Osrin and also Rachel Anderson in lane seven for Millfield School in that respect. The rest all gunning for senior gold. And it's Jessica Fuller of the favourite for it in lane four, but Chloe Golding in six, Charlotte Evans in five, and Courtney Price in three. We'll certainly have something to say about that. This is the women's 200 metre backstroke, a final. Loving some of those backstroke starts. Charlotte Evans 
really getting some good height out of the water in the lane five off that backstroke wedge. Our favourite in the centre pool, Jessica Fuller Love, perhaps getting the best, better start. She's got some really nice underwater work. Also lane two, Hannah Henderson. She's another HPC Ontario Canada representative. Down this first 50 metres, you don't want to go out too quick. You want to control, especially those legs. You want to control that leg kick. You don't want to over kick down the first 50 metres. Because in backstroke, if your legs go, it's game over. Especially with all this underwater work that these swimmers do. It's more leg work, so you've got to really control that leg kick down the first 50, 100 metres. You don't want to go too crazy. You can see Jessica Fuller Love now starting to dominate this race. 10 metres underwater on every single turn. Makes a big difference. Here we are, halfway point it is. Jessica full of 101.42 at the halfway point. She's a very experienced swimmer. Went out of the University of Bath. Great pedigree swimming down there, senior swimming. Really work on the skills down there, really work on the technique and the, uh, the details and find things in their strokes and their skills and technique. And um, good, good turn out there from lane, uh, from lane six. And that is Chloe Golding. We mentioned her earlier, didn't we? It's uh, season's best and personal best of 206.61. It's actually the quickest that anyone's been this year that's in the field. And look at the turn as well from Chloe Golding. She's starting to make a move. It was like she was relaxed down that first 100 like I was talking about. And she's really working that back end now. And we can see she's just started to take the lead. She did save something from the heat. She went 208.9 this morning. So she saved a little bit, didn't she? There she goes. Well, it looks like here she's ahead of the Commonwealth Games finalist, Jessica Fullerlove, in lane four. And it's lane six of Chloe Golding. Well, we did say keep a bit of an eye out for her. And 204.57 is a super time for her. She smashed the personal best, and it's by far and away the best British time this year done by a female 200 metre backstroke athlete on the short course format. Uh, Jessica Fullerlove in second. But goodness me, Chloe Goldie, she looks exhausted, but absolutely delighted with that. Maybe a bit surprised as well with the time she's ultimately got. Yeah, she came back so well. She was nowhere to be seen at the halfway point. Nowhere to be seen. And she came back like a train, like an absolute monster. Well done. I mean, yeah, some, some swimmers pace like that. And that's what, sometimes you've got to pace the tuna back like that. In fact, most of the time, because you've got to save those legs. And that's what she did, she did nice and relaxed down that first 100 metres and then she brought it home and then she engaged the legs and came back like a machine, 204.57. Well, Charlotte Evans getting a personal best as well, 206.86. And uh, a word for Jessica Fuller Love managing to better the season's best she got this morning. Hannah Henderson finishing in fourth spot. And even though she's missed out on a commemorative medal there, the Canadian, she's still got a PB, 16 years of age. She's gone from 209.9 to now 207.53. Again, some really encouraging times there out in the pool. Honey Osrin, she's managed to take five hundredths of a second off her impressive personal best she got this morning. So she'll be delighted with her day's work and we may well see her as well on the junior podium for this event. Yeah, thank you very much, Jonathan. Well, so much to talk about from, from one race. You had the yeah. seniors at one end of the pool who competed and duked it out over the full 200 metres. Brilliant race from Chloe Golding in particular. And then right at the bottom, we sort of, in a race sense, don't really worry about who finished eighth and ninth. You've got two teenagers who have absolutely no right to be swimming in the same pool as these yeah. guys. But you think, and then you see the times they're swimming. Incredible stuff. Yeah, it's fantastic. 13 years old. I've got a name right now. Caitlin Ebbage. Um, she went 2.12 this morning. 2.11 tonight. 2.11.2 .2 tonight in the final. So showing that, showing that maturity of going quick in the heats, doing personal best times, coming back tonight in the final in an outside lane in lane nine and going quicker again. That's, that's really difficult to do, even as a senior. So fantastic swimming from this 13-year-old. 2.11.2 uh, .2 is just, just unbelievable. Yeah, and a great word for Honey Osrin as well. He lowered her best from earlier on to by 500 of a second to 2.10 as well. Some real talent coming through by the looks of things in the backstroke in the female category. Brilliant swim there from Chloe Golding yep. to win the gold. And uh, just before we go into the medals, James, we can have a little bit of time to preview our, our next event. One I know you've got a big eye on in, in many respects, the 200 IM, the Battle of the Litchfields we're billing this as. Max versus Joe. Yep. Max comes in as big favourite as a, as a 
more experienced swimmer on an international level as well. But don't count out Joe Litchfield because I don't think we saw anywhere near his best this morning. He seems to have something left in the tank. Yeah, I think so. yeah. There's a little bit of a uh, little bit of tactics this morning from Joe. Perhaps um, I can't see past Max Litchfield winning this one. Um, Certainly, if he continues his form. I mean, he's in great form. I mean, he's he's, he's a tough competitor. I mean, I mean, so is Joe as well. Um, it should make for a great race. I mean, I, I'm. I'm I'm pinning Max to win this one. Um, he's got great skills, great underwater. He's, he's just he's just a very resilient, strong swimmer. If he's ahead, he ain't losing. And, uh, you know, actually, Max hasn't got the best fly in the world. I mean, I think that might be his weak point is his butterfly. So don't expect him to be ahead at the butterfly. But after that, especially after the breaststroke, he's going to be ahead. If somebody's going to want to beat Max, they've got to be ahead of him at the breaststroke because Max's freestyle is unbelievable. Yeah, it is. And his breaststroke as well is a real strong point yeah, he's too. Got strong. He's going to be tough to beat. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Here are the medals being presented here. And uh, first presentation is for the women's. I thought it was going to be for the women's 50 meter freestyle. It's actually for the uh, 1500 here. Tom Derbyshire picking up the bronze medal. It was a uh, very, very fine race in the seniors in particular, wasn't it? That 1500. And then the junior medals presented from a variety of heats from this morning. Nathan Hughes picking up his silver. Very well earned that as well. Battled really hard. Only won his silver medal, of course, by four hundredths of a second. Real, real battle for silver in that senior final. And Toby Robinson here, picking up his gold medal and indeed his trophy. And uh, very well earned that one. It, it always is in in 1500 it, it feels like they've gone well almost quite literally the extra mile to to win their their medals and it was a great race actually in in the final i think toby robinson in particular swam so so well but the battle for second separated by four hundredths of a second yeah it was um and you could see it you could see that brewing couldn't you that that that, that battle between those two um you know those those two swimmers. It was uh, and four one hundred the second year is 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 so close. But it was a great finish, and that, that's why sometimes the fifteen hundred is is so so special because if there is that battle, because the race is so long, it makes it more intense, doesn't it? Over a fifty, you expect it to be kind of you know head to head, you know, right there. But when it's a fifteen hundred, the pressure builds and it builds and it builds through the fifteen hundred, and that's what makes it so exciting sometimes. Yeah, it really does. Great race there, and congratulations again to our senior winner. Toby Robinson. Next presentation will be for the women's 50 metres freestyle. A couple of reasons why this was so special. Obviously, we have that incredible time from Kayla Sanchez, the Canadian, which uh, is confirmed as world junior record. And uh, huge congratulations to her for that. That's a very, very good time. Uh, Anna Hopkin, who's a little bit more experienced, early 20s, but what a swim from her. 23 7 is that's up there, you know, that's up yeah. there with anything she could have possibly wanted. She told us in an interview she wanted to go somewhere in the 23s, yeah. but when you take three tenths into it, she'd have been happy with 23.99 by the sound of things. But 23.7 yeah. is, I think, in her own words, beyond what she expected. Yeah, and it, it, she just showed a real maturity about herself, actually, um, which we've seen a lot of, of uh, over the our British swimmers over the weekend, which is fantastic to see. But she she recognised this morning that her term was off, which is which is something that. I know it's tonight. Her turn was spot on. She absolutely nailed it, and especially with her, st her start as well. Um, and I think she recognised with Kayla Sanchez next to her. I think she recognised that she needs to hit these starts. She needs to hit these turns to perfection, and she nailed it. And she was—I think she was a little bit surprised with the time, wasn't she? Twenty-three point seven zero. She was a little bit surprised about that, but she nailed it tonight. Great swim. Yeah, it's interesting to sort of hear as well that she, whether it's a deliberate tactic or not, she uh, she went the other way with them. Um, with the turn so she couldn't actually see Kayla Sanchez and she just knew she had to put her head down and barrel it towards the wall which I thought was interesting but here are the presentations for the 50 meter freestyle the uh, junior bronze is uh, going there to Pools Jasmine McCray a commemorative bronze there going to Victoria Diona Begeli from Hamilton, UAE. And this is a bronze medal for Katie Latham of uh, Thanet Swim. 
That snazzy outfit, I was that snazzy, say, bit snazzy of, costume. Bit of geometry going on there. That is like some sort of weird art. It's supposed to mess with your eyes. Elna Dewhurst here picking up the silver medal for Anaconda. Emily Barkley third in the race, but a silver medal at a national level. On the left for summit. Kira Tomasello getting the gold there for City of Manchester Aquatics. And Anna Hopkin with a, a fantastic gold medal, <laughs> well earned as well. Much smaller than the junior as well, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, that's such, a, such a strong swimmer. Always the way. Kira Tomasello, by the way, 14 this year. <laughs> wow. They're getting taller and taller, aren't they? Taller and taller. <laughs> well, a big smile on the face of Anna Hopkin. Interesting to hear that she was uh, sort of enjoying the American scene. Very, very different, of course, to the, to the British swimming yep. scene. It, I mean, the most fundamental, obvious difference is the fact they swim yards and not meters, of course. But other than that, that it's difficult to sort of describe to someone who's, who's never sort of recognized or seen, but the college sports scene in general in America is so, so huge. Probably bigger than anything we have. Yep. Probably other, really, in the Premier League in football in terms of sport in this country. Yeah. It's yeah. so massive. Yeah, it's a great setup over there uh, with the universities. It goes hand in hand. Their sport, you know, their swimming and their sport and their schoolwork and they, the university setup all goes hand in hand. Um, and it's a great setup, and I kind of wish we had that over here, actually. Um, but you can see Anna Hopkin does a lot of work on her starts and turns, especially with the NCAA championships you have over there. We're talking about about short course yards so she'll have to do loads and loads of turns um, over there um, and that's why you can see that she's got those skills and that's the simple way to put it for, so for all you young swimmers out there if you want to get better at your starts and turns you practice it you practice it day in day out every single time you go to training and we've got our next ceremony here this is for the 100 meters breaststroke some really really good swims in this one most notably of course from our gold medal winner James Wilby Yeah, personal best time from James Wilby, yeah, 57.6. Got these juniors, though, fantastic swimming as well. Yeah, Harvey Freeman picking up the bronze medal for Northampton in the juniors. Edward Baxter getting the bronze in the seniors, the left for swimmer. Jason Robson, 15-year-old from York City, just up the roads, gets the junior silver. Yeah, well done, York City. Well done, Jason Robson. That's a well-earned silver medal. David Murphy tried to push James Wilby all the way. Couldn't quite get near him in the end. Half a second back, but gets the silver medal. And the junior gold goes to Millfield's William Ellington. Yeah, I think on the two, I think David Murphy around the wall and, and, and underwater pull-outs. He was, he, he was matching Wilby, if not maybe creeping up on him. Just James Wilby's swimming speed is just just a little bit far superior tonight. You mentioned this morning a phrase which I thought was really interesting because it applies obviously to so many sports but also in swimming, winning is a habit. And it yeah. just feels at the minute like James Wilby is just not going to lose. Whenever he yeah. gets in the water, you expect something to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, once you start winning you know, your local competitions and then regional, national competitions, it does, bec it does become a habit and you, and you get that experience of knowing how to win. Um, which sounds kind of weird, but yeah, once you understand what it takes to win in, in, in the training sessions and in the gym, and uh, I speak about this, so I've, I think I've mentioned training in the gym, but it is so, so important, but you do get in that routine and you do get in that habit of winning um, and knowing what it takes to win as well. Um, and James will be, you know, he only figured it out a few couple of years ago. You know, he's, he's, he's happily mentioned already to us, hasn't he, that it, 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 he had to change a few things to become serious in the sport, and, and then he worked out what it, what, what it meant to win, what it, what it took to stand in the middle of the podium. Yeah, he's certainly enjoying himself as well. Massive big grin on his face. Yep. He's, he's enjoying his swimming, it's clear to see him. Yep. It, it sounds almost pointless to say, but when you're winning, it tends to make you pretty happy and yep. it, that improves the confidence, improves your, your general satisfaction. It makes you want to swim more. 100%, yeah, yeah. I mean, swimmers want to win, athletes want to win, and when they win, you are happy, and when you're happy, you train better and race better again. So, and it it, It's a good cycle, isn't it? It is a good cycle, yeah. Um, you know, that's why a part of me, a very small 
small part of me thinks that there shouldn't be silver and bronze medals at the Olympics. I mean, a, a, a small part of me. I mean, being a little bit controversial here, but a part of me does feel like there shouldn't be silver and bronze medals. I mean, that's my very sceptical kind of oh. competitive mind at work. But swimmers like to win. Um, and you can see James Wilby likes to win. He's got a big smile on his face. He's a happy swimmer at the minute, isn't he? Very, yeah. very happy swimmer. And you can see that in his swimming. You can see it in his, in, in his, in his shape as well, and in, in the way he stands behind the blocks. You can see he was, he was looking lean, wasn't he? I mentioned he's not got a six pack, he's got an eight pack. It's dunk, 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 all the way down here. Um, and he's in fantastic shape, and he's a happy swimmer, and that's what we want to see from James Yeah, Wilby. he certainly yeah. is. Congratulations to James, and indeed all of our medalists in the 100 metre breaststroke. We've still got our next event coming up very, very shortly, which is the men's 200 individual medley. Uh, we mentioned at the top of the programme, uh, James, this, this could be on form a Max Litchfield potential British record and the person who owns that <laughs> British record is yourself can you yeah. take us back to the time when you saw it because it was yeah the fact it stood for quite a long time is is genuinely pretty impressive yeah it was one of my favorite weekends of swimming actually it was in the 2011 World Cup in Berlin in Germany um, I broke the 100 iron British record there um, I swam I nearly broke the British record in the 100 breaststroke actually I was 0.2 of a second off it I was I was I was on fire I was flying in 152.5 um, can Max do it? Yes, he can. Can he do it tonight? I'm not sure. We'll have to see um, see how he moves. He, we know he's moving well, um, but let's you know. We we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, I kind of hope he does it. I mean, the records have got to go. It's been there for seven years now. It's it's time that somebody uh, gave it a good whooping. I think. Yeah, and a, a reminder as well. Who is uh, who is your competition in said 200 meter individual medley? Oh in yeah, that race? The, yeah, yeah, in Berlin. Didn't yeah, even win a gold, did it? That no, time. No, I got silver there behind a uh, certain Michael Phelps. Yeah, yeah, he beat me by point. 0.2, I think. It might be point, point 0.5 in the point 0.2 in the hundred medley and point 0.5 in the uh, in the two hundred medley. Yeah, so he was a freak, wasn't he? I was thinking to myself, <laughs> I've got to be ahead of him after the breaststroke. I've got to be ahead, and I wasn't ahead after the breaststroke. We were, we kind of turned. He maybe turned by point 0.1 ahead of me onto the freestyle, and I, I mean, I, I kind of knew I was doomed. You know, you basically get the Olympic champion at, uh, at freestyle, and freestyle's my worst strokes. So I was just. Gritting my teeth and pulling the water as hard as I could. And, and you say an Olympic champ, not just an Olympic champ, maybe the greatest ever Olympic champion in any sport. Yeah. He was, he was unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, in my it? eyes, he's the greatest athlete ever to walk this planet. Yeah. Uh, so out of everybody, not not bad to be behind him, mate. By point, however many of a second. Uh, if you're gonna yeah. lose to anyone, if you're gonna <laughs> it's lose still to bad. anyone, yeah. I mean, if if I'm gonna lose, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't like losing to anybody, even if it is Michael Phelps. But <laughs> yeah, well, that's I guess the right attitude to have, isn't it? If you put it like that, I guess it was cool to lose. So <laughs> 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 well, at least you got a British record as a consolation prize, eh? And that has yeah, stood for well, a very, very long time. And, yeah, sure. And, and, and quite rightly so. Seven years that has that has stood. Yep. And if anyone is going to break it. Max Litchfield looks like he has the potential to do so. Yep. Incredible 400 IM swimmer Max Litchfield has represented yep. Britain at, uh, at the Olympics at that level in, uh, in 2016 in Rio. Came fourth, didn't he? Yeah, he did, which is, I mean, that's the worst position in the world to finish, but he is an unbelievably good medley swimmer. And we saw on day number one just how good he looked in the freestyle, which isn't his event. Yep. 400 freestyle, yes, it's maybe his distance, but it's not his event by any stretch. And he nearly broke James Guy's European oh. short course record. I mean, the strongest, it is his strongest stroke. Uh, we mentioned Fly is his weakest, but yeah, yeah he's, 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 he's just looking so strong right now. That 338 is, is quick, it's really, really quick, and not far off James Guy's British record. And we know James Guy at that time was a 400 freestyle specialist and an ex world champion in freestyle. So, um, yeah, I mean, let's just see how he goes. Um, he's up pretty soon. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll be cheering him on. <laughs> we wish him all the best. Before that, though, we have got the uh, B final of this 200 IM. Uh, ben Harrison is the leading light in this one. He qualified quickest, the Mount Kelly swimmer in lane four. Keep an eye on Adam Wilson as well. He's from the 1500 meters earlier on. He was in the penultimate heat of that one and uh, actually won heat five of six in the 1500 meters. Let's see if he's got any gas left in the tank. The Newcastle swimmer in lane three. A couple of left swimmers in five and six as well. As uh, we get back to the racing, we get back to the pool. Men's Open 200 metres individual medley B final. And we go back to Jonathan Bell. Thank you as ever, Steve. We have uh, nine of these ten swimmers managing to get a personal best or a season's best earlier on today. Robbie Jones, the only one just short in that respect by bang on 0.4 seconds. He's going in lane two for Mount Kelly. But it's his teammate, Ben Harrison, who's in the fastest seeded lane. PB earlier on of 2.03.46. Lane nine vacant for this one. 
They're expecting Matthew Donville of Warrington Warriors, but he's not here for this B final, but the remainder of them are. And uh, just trying to you know, really who's got the best start there. And you look at lane one, right on the near side, the yellow cap city leaves and Jonathan Milner. Yeah, not much separating all these eight boys, actually. I'm just having a little look at the times from this morning. And uh, the quickest is 203.46 and the slowest is 205.15. So that's just a second and a half splitting all these nine boys in this final, in this B final. So we should expect for a, a, a pretty close race. Um, it's looking like that so far. The 100, uh, the 75 metre marks, apologies, is uh, it's pretty close. It's maybe lanes six and seven at the moment that's uh, Jack Schlinglaw and Jacob Davies and there it is Davies 56.42 just 0.5 or six, five, six, seven of a second behind is Schillinglaw so these two and this breaststroke leg is uh, it is so so important on tuna medley it's where big gains can be made especially if you're a really strong breaststroker against a, a, a relatively weak breaststroker, you can make up a lot of ground. And we can see in the centre of the pool, Ben Harrison from Mount Kelly Swimming starting to make his way through the field. Obviously a strong breaststroker, the city leads from a, making a move as well. Jonathan Milner here in lane number one. 133.18 for Schillinglaw. It's all going to be down to this freestyle. There's maybe three or four boys in contention for this gold say gold the win of the uh, the winner of the B final we've got three there turning simultaneously Jonathan Milner in one Ben Harrison in four and also in lane six as we said Jack Schillinglaw has been leading for the last couple of splits but can he hold on right towards the finale here it looks like the middleman Ben Harrison is going to do it he does as well 20157 the three of them all managing to get under 202 for the first time in their careers and Ben Harrison there with that time 20157 brilliant stuff from him Schillinglaw second and Milner in third but what about between those three yeah it was a good race actually wasn't it it was a good race Ben Harrison finishing strong obviously you could see him coming through on that breaststroke such an important leg and he had a strong freestyle as well good swim from lane one Jonathan Milner from the city of Leeds he was just in contention the whole way wasn't he just a solid four strokes a strong freestyle finish as well, but it was Ben Harrison, 201.57, then Jack Schillinglaw, 201.90, and then Jonathan Milner, 201.95. And as, as Jono has said already, it's the first time those boys have been under 2-2. I'm sure they can get back into training at their home programmes, and under two minutes will be their next target. Well, cracking, cracking warm-up then for the uh, A final that's just around the corner. Steve said the battle between the Litchfield brothers. Max Litchfield this year, far superior to that of uh, Joe and uh, you look at the difference between their season's best it's uh, almost a full four seconds in favour of Max Litchfield but uh, you never know what can happen tonight in the pool and some of the other ones in there as well Thomas Dean third fastest Brit of the year the 18 year old has swam 157.64 already this year and that was his PB last month here in Sheffield at the Bucks event so, uh, well, we're all set for this one. And the entrance of the uh, athletes to the pool deck. Which is very difficult to ask a, a British record holder if they feel as though their record's going to be <laughs> broken in a race. But realistically, <laughs> you look at Max Litchfield, a couple of seconds away in terms of his personal best. Is that doable? Yes, is the answer. Yeah, I mean, he, well, I, and I only say that because of the way he swam last night. I mean, I mentioned it a few times. He smashed it last night. He smashed his personal best time in that 400 freestyle. So, I mean, he's obviously feeling good. He's obviously feeling confident. Can he knock two seconds off his best in this medley? Yeah, why not? Why not? Bronze medalist, of course, from the uh, European Championship. So they're on this year, Max Litchfield. And... Uh, in there as well uh, Thomas Dean in lane five who has been to the uh, European Junior Championships this year didn't succeed in the uh, he did succeed sorry in the 200 line got a gold medal I was looking at his 400 as well where he got a bronze so he certainly accomplished Thomas Dean and, and really he's the next one who is in waiting to step up and take the place of the likes of Max Litchfield yeah Thomas Dean University of Bath 176 he's gonna have to have to move some to a uh, challenge. 
other, these other lads here. Uh, I mean, it's 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 going it's to be tricky for Thomas Dean because I've, I've got a feeling Max is going to go really well. So it's just it, I don't want Thomas to kind of get blown out of the water. Uh, Max looks feels breaststroke and freestyle. I think going to be too strong for the rest of these guys. His, his butterfly is maybe the weak point, but I mean I think it's an advantage having your weakest stroke at the at the start. That's why I was a, uh, you know, my freestyle was my weakest, so it was always at the end, and it's it's a lot trickier to do it that way. If it was if it was swam backwards, I'd be I would have been a lot happier. Well, the men's 200 meter individual medley A final is all set. There's a big vested interest, I'm sure, in the Litchfield household, but there are many other names out there in the pool as well who are capable of challenging for a podium spot. Also uh, in there worth mentioning as well, we do have the one uh, Canada Invitational Athlete, Magdara, in lane six, the eldest in the pool at the age of uh, 25. Managing to uh, get a time miller of 159.73. He can go quicker than that, PB of 158.67. We'll, we'll uh, wait and see how he gets on there, but Max Lixfield already with a strong start over the uh, first leg. Yeah, I mean, flies his weakest stroke, and he's gone out really quick, 24.64. So he's not messed about. I mean, he's really going through. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's got his eyes on this British record. It needs. It probably needs to go now. And if he keeps this pace up, he's going to do it. I mean, he's got. He's turning. His turns are great. Backstroke and his, his breaststroke and freestyle are superb as well. You can see Joe Litchfield next to him. 52-2 at the 100 meter mile. It's quick. It's quick. British record's definitely on here. It's definitely, definitely on. He, he might even go 150. He could even squeak a 151 if he keeps his pace going, which is superb. And he's a great freestyler as well. So I expect Max to uh, really push home here. Keeping that breaststroke nice and long, not rushing it too much. You can see you don't want to snatch it too much on this uh, on this breaststroke leg. Joel Litchfield with a really good breaststroke. You can see him coming back actually. Joel Litchfield's got a superb breaststroke, 125.90. It's going to be close. He's got to come back 26.4 this British record, but he can do that. He can do that. And look at this freestyle from Max Litchfield. Great turner as well. I love the way he turns. Does that little dive turn that I like to call it. And look at him. He's working so hard. And with five metres left, it's going to be right on the button whether he's going to get this. He might just be outside it. 153.21. It's quick from Max Litchfield. And a massive personal best by just over a second. Well, the voice there of James Goddard, who is a very relieved man right now. Max Litchfield <laughs> touching in at 153-2-1, but a great swim nevertheless. Half a second, uh, one and a half, two and a half seconds, should I say, in front of Thomas Dean, who ended up being in third. Joe Litchfield wedged in between them. But uh, Max Litchfield, he started strong. I mean, are we saying here on the breaststroke, that is where, really, Max let himself down? I mean, I mean, maybe. I mean, maybe looked a, looked a little bit too relaxed. Joe Litchfield does have a, a, a very good breaststroke. You can see him just. Trying, you can see Max is disappointed as he look in his face. He, 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 I think he wanted to go quicker than that. I'm, I'm hopefully, we're going to have an interview with him after this, and we'll ask him um, if he was disappointed. You can see it in his face. He is. I, I'll, I'll, I'll ask him if he wanted to go quicker, um, which is an obvious answer. But um, or maybe where he could have gone quicker in that medley. I'm gonna have a little chat about it. Is a PB nevertheless for Max Litchfield, who's managed to knock off over a second of what he previously managed, 1.21 to be precise. Joe Litchfield there as well, he's got a PB, as has Thomas Dean. So successful for our top three in that men's 200 IM A final, which has ultimately been won by Max Litchfield ahead of brother Joe. Yeah, good swim from Thomas Dean there, 155.7. About his personal best of 157. He did that last month, was it? A couple of months ago. So to drop another two seconds in a in a month or so is uh, is a great swim from Thomas Dean. Yeah, a couple of seconds uh, off from what he got here in Sheffield for the books event. Indeed, uh, just over a month ago. That was on uh, Remembrance Sunday. And he's managed to up that time as well further. Moving on now then to the women's 100 meter butterfly B final and some great young talent taking part in this one. Sophie Freeman in lane three always seems to shine at these national meets. Betsy Wizard as well from Northampton. 
Betsy Wizard and Ed Mildred, the two Northampton swimmers, young swimmers, always seem to be pinning their wits in the national finals. And uh, you wonder if they'll be dark horses for the future. Maisie Elliott there as well for City of Leicester in lane five for the women's 100 metre butterfly B final. And they go with uh, Betsy Wizard getting uh, personal best this morning, just yeah. over a minute. And really, we're looking at this, James, and we're saying someone here is surely going to break the minute barrier for the first time that's in their career. That's exactly what I was thinking as well. As uh, how many have we got here? We've got loads on a minute. All of them. Wow. There's nine out of the ten swimmers here with a personal best and season best of one minute. Emma Reed out there in lane zero is uh, 101.07, so she's pretty much on the minute barrier. So this should be a really close race. This should be the very tight, and all these girls are going to be wanting to get under that minute marker, for sure. And if they do get under that minute barrier, then they'll probably be in the top 10 fastest British times short course this year, which would be fantastic when you consider some of the uh, ages we've got on show. One of them, Sophie Freeman in lane three for Plymouth Leander, is the one on the near side of the Golden Ropes who is really going strong. And it looks like she'll be the favourite to get this here. She's been chased to the wall, 59-0-1. And we've got three that have managed to get under a minute. But Sophie Freeman, the best of them, almost managing to get under 59. And that puts her not just in the top 10, but the top five fastest British times of this year of a short course at the age of 14 years old. Tremendous from her, Maisie Elliott second and Ali Larson third. Hello Sophie Freeman, welcome to the Under Minute Club. She'll be pleased with that. She'll be pleased, well done Sophie Freeman, Plymouth Leander, great swim. Very much was and I don't think she can quite take it in yet and uh, almost bittersweet you could argue she's managed to get under a minute she could have almost got under 59 seconds there but you do wonder if she secretly knew she'd be able to pull that out of the bag and uh, she certainly did Maisie Elliott and Ali Larson completing the top three and you know what Betsy Wizard Emily Hames and co will be aiming for next they will be no doubt trying to get that 60 second barrier broken at their next meet Terrific stuff. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Well, what an incredible race that was. Sophie Freeman, 59-01 at the age of 14. Yeah. How about it? And I, I would have liked to see a bit more emotion after the race, Rose. She kind of just looked cool and calm. It's like, mm, okay, yeah, no problem. Just but no day in the Sophie office, Freeman isn't it? Under, in the under a minute club. Congratulations. It's a nice place to be. Um, good swim from the youngster. Nearly under the 15, <laughs> nearly under the 59 club. Yeah, as well. she skipped the 59 altogether, didn't she? But uh, no, she looked good. She looked strong. Um, she she just took it out and she held out the lead the whole time. She's got that nice long butterfly. She with that nice long entry at the front um, and held it together all the way. Held that held that form all the way through and, and finished really strong as well. It's good swim. Some brilliant swims in that one. Quite a few swimmers going under 60 for the very first time. It's going to be a very interesting final this one because there's four or five swimmers who very feasibly could win this, which is always what we like. Marie Wattle was certainly quickest in qualifying in lane four, but anyone really around her in those sort of central lanes are going to have a bit of a shout. We've got Laura Stevens in lane five, Emily Large in lane three, Emily Crane in lane two, Anna Hopkin, we've already seen, is a wonderful sprinter. Yep. 100 flies about her limit, but it's very, very good at the fly. Let's see what Anna can do. I mean, maybe she was, because she knew she was going to have a busy final session tonight, maybe in this 100 fly in the heat, she was kind of taking it a little easy, you know, just trying to save a little bit of energy. So let's keep our eyes on Anna Hopkin. She's a sprinter, so we know she's going to go out quick. Marie Wattle impressed me this morning. I thought she was. Um, I thought she looked smooth. She looked sort of rangy in there. She had a nice, you know, very tall, um, almost lanky swim. But she's got that nice long butterfly. Uh, she's going to use the big long arms. Look at those big, strong long arms. She's going to use those in the butterfly here to uh, drive the stroke forward. So, uh, she, but she impressed me this morning. She she looked good. Marie Wattle looks like if you wanted to design a butterfly swimmer, that <laughs> that was what you want. Huge yeah. long legs, long arms, yep. rangy, yep. great, great structure for it. And she is a very, very quick swimmer. She comes in as a favourite, was the fastest qualifier. But let's see if any of these swimmers on the outside can spring a little bit of an upset. It's over to Jonathan. Thank you, Steve. And uh, Marie Wattle and Laura Stevens, the quickest two from earlier on today, but Emily Large, as you mentioned as well, she's the European junior champion. And a 100 fly 
getting gold earlier on this year. But she managed to uh, better that time today. 58. 8-1 now stands at her personal best. And uh, feels like an open pool this, but Marie Wattle there getting the best of the starts in lane four for Loughborough. Yeah, she really impressed me this morning. She's got this beautiful, long, gliding butterfly, perfectly timed. You can see the, the bum and the hips really drive out of the water as she drops her head. So she's got great undulation in this, uh, in this butterfly, what you need to get that power in the stroke. Doesn't she look good? She just glides across the surface. I mean, we'll watch James Guy later in the uh, in the tuna fly. He does a similar thing, just glides across the surface. And once you get that timing right in your stroke, in your butterfly, this is what happens. Well, it's amazing how quickly it, it is, isn't it, for her to have pulled herself once the whole body length in front of Laura Stevens to her left-hand side in lane five. Who's giving it a right good go. Yeah, Laura's coming back strong. But not quite close enough in the end. 57-2-2 for Marie Wattle who was quite frankly outstanding in that and she's uh, well over half a second inside of her personal best with Laura Stevens second 0.4 seconds behind Namely Large also managing to get a PB there 58.15 so three PBs for our top three Anna Hopkin just outside the podium spots there with her time of 58.92 first time that she's managed to get under 59 seconds so she'll be delighted with that but uh, winner there Marie Wattle of Loughborough University yeah there are the official results on your screen now great finish from Laura Stevens she won that two meters butterfly last night didn't she and uh, she's got that endurance you've got more of the endurance you can see Marie Wattle's got more of the speed and Laura Stevens has got a bit more of the endurance and uh, down that last 25 Stevens was reeling her in and reeling her in but uh, Marie Wattle did enough to hold her off. Well, it's about to get quicker now with the men's 50 metre backstroke. B final as ever to uh, kick us off. And uh, some of the more youthful prospects coming in here. In fact, all but one of these swimmers, sorry to uh, make you feel old there, James, but all but one of these swimmers born after the year 2000. The only exception, Daniel Hall in lane zero who uh, turned 20 earlier on this year but I mean PB's galore all them swimmers I mentioned there that were born after the year 2000 have all got personal best from this morning yeah it's great to see yeah it's great to see I mean, I mean that's what you'd expect for the juniors here you'd expect them to come in here and personal best times would be the aim of 99.9% .9 of the juniors that turn up at this competition so it's good to see it's good to see these boys smashing it in the heat let's see if they can go quicker in this final which is every swimmer's aim and target is to always go quicker in the final yeah a lot of uh, age group medalists from uh, the last couple of years taking part in this and which one of these do you, you wonder will be uh, breaking through to a finals in the next year or two maybe even time for the summers but we can see how this one transpires in the men's 50 meter backstroke b final Just looking at the speed final from the heats, 0.4 of a second separating all nine swimmers. That's incredible. Great start from lane number five, though. Sorry about that. Uh, Harry Noble, Mount Kelly. Mount Kelly having a good weekend, by the way. I keep mentioning it, but they do. And uh, some great underwater work as well from uh, Alessandro Badisso. It's going to be on the touch, though. Alessandro Badisso from Mount Kelly winning first and his teammate Sam Daly from Mount Kelly touching silver and out there in lane eight city of Sheffield swimmer Charlie Brown taking bronze good swim well once again countless uh, PB's falling in that one and it looks to me as though uh, nearly the whole pool's got one there in fact I think they uh, may well have there may be one or two exceptions but an awful lot of PB's coming from that one there as we just review uh, the results now and I think it's uh, case of seven the top seven all getting personal best there again as James was saying it's fantastic to see at these meets almost expected but Alessandro Bediso winning that beat final 25 to 6 for the Mount Kelly man thank you very much Jonathan well that was a heck of a race all but one of the swimmers born after the year 2000 
trim. Well, it's just yeah. the anyway, thing, it's almost it? time to uh, to speak to the man who won the men's 200 metres individual medley title tonight. A fantastic swim from Max Litchfield, a brand new personal best. And I'd like to say he joins us now from down on the poolside. Max Litchfield, big congratulations to you. First off, how do you feel at the end of that swim? Oh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, really pleased with that. Um, coming in here, it was about having fun and swimming fast. So. Um, ticked off both those boxes today in that race and on to 400 tomorrow. Yeah, congratulations on a great swim and also a great time. Joined alongside me by James Goddard, whose British record, <laughs> he's been sweating all day on this, by the way, but I've his British record sweating. survives. <laughs> uh, was that something you had in your mind at all? Yeah, I mean, I know, I know what Jimmy's record is, so um, going in there, it was, like I say, it was just about swimming fast. Um, couldn't quite knock that one off today, but um, hopefully we're back stronger next year and try and get that one. Yeah, I could see at the end of the race, Max, um, the camera went straight on your face and you looked a little bit disappointed, actually. Is that, <laughs> is that the reason why? Yeah, I was, um, I was hoping to dip under it, but, you know, um, it is what it is. Um, it's a good race for me and um, we've been ticking off some boxes and what we've been working on this year. So um, it's positive to see me put that into, into race situations. Yeah, what are you putting down? I mean, you're swimming so fast. That 3.38 last night, that 400 freestyle was exceptional. What are you putting down? Is, have you changed your training? Like, what's happening? Um, I mean, obviously, we just had a, a change of programme this year down in Loughborough now, so... Um, but Dave's been brilliant down there and, and all the guys down there have been fantastic so um, it's just nice to see the hard work paying off that we've been putting in. And in terms of the end of this year Max, a very very different end of last year, end of this year to compared to the last. I mean you had an awful injury that you had to come back from. In a way have, have you approached this year very differently and you're feeling looking to go back stronger into 2019? Uh, yeah definitely. Obviously. And, and on the bike and doing rehab work so um, to end this season on a high and um, to be back swimming at my full fitness is, is really positive and I'm uh, just going to take that into next year and um, hopefully have another, good, another great year. Well we certainly wish you all the best with that, congratulations on the swim, look forward to seeing you in the 400 as well, ladies and gentlemen, Max Litchfield. Thanks, Max. Thank you. Thank you very much Max. Now lovely to speak to him and I had to ask the question if he was after your record and, yeah. and it's it's nice to almost see like that almost honesty between you two where you're like yeah. yeah I went for him I didn't quite get it yeah. and it, it's nice to have that isn't it well I, I knew when he said it um, I was pleased with the swim you asked him and he, and he said I'm, I'm pleased with the swim and I, I wanted because I I love watching the swimmers reactions after racing and I could see the camera on his face and he like put his head back and rolled his eyes a little bit so I wanted to ask him were you really disappointed like was there something there <laughs> and I knew he was going to say that he wanted to break that British record I mean Max is a tough competitor I know he wants to break records and, and, and he'll get it he'll get it soon and it's worth pointing out as well I sort of half mentioned it there but he's actually had to come back from a pretty awful injury at the start yeah. this year obviously missed the Commonwealth Games at the yeah. start of the year which I know would have been a big blow to him but to come back and to work so hard yeah. to get back to any sort of level it must be it must feel amazing for him to finish this year so strong yeah I mean it just shows the character of the, of, of the man doesn't it I mean he's Obviously, mentally, a really, really tough lad. Um, to come back from that, he's, he looks in fantastic shape. He's swimming like a machine. So, you know, he's obviously training hard. He's got this mental, you know, sometimes an injury like that can give you that mental kind of, you know, grit and toughness, which we know he had anyway, but it just kind of proves it in a way, doesn't it? It proves how yeah. tough he is. It proves that he's got that mental strength uh, and that physical strength as well from his training. Yeah, a brilliant. Brilliant swimmer, Max Litchfield, and lovely to see him back at his best. And Absolutely. we can't wait to watch him go next year. He's, yeah. he's such a talented swimmer, and in a world championship year, you yeah. never ever discount him. Fourth, of course, at the last Rio Olympics. Now we move on to our next event. This one should be a crack, a men's 50 backstroke. Yep. We can see Tom Howdell here coming into shot. Nick Pyle and Luke Greenbank, we've already seen. This is a real shootout here. Difficult to predict where this one's going to end up. We see the 50 meter backstroke record currently held by Chris Walker Heaven. That's potentially in danger as well if they go really quick. Yeah, I think this is a, a big PB from uh, Thomas Howdle. I, th I think he's going to get it tonight. I think Tom, he's, got, he's just flowing with confidence at the minute. Uh, Luke's a bit more of a two meter specialist. Uh, Tom's a bit more of a sprinter. Nicholas Powell could contend it. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be close. I'm, I'm going to go for Thomas Howdle though. And we look forward to watching it. It's over to our race commentator, Mr. Jonathan Bell. Well, that time earlier on today from uh, Thomas Howdle was the fastest any Britain has done in 2018. 23, 6, 8 for the Stockport Metro man who turns at 21 just before the new year. But Luke Greenbank, who previously was the fastest Englishman, from 2018, we we'll want to have something to say about that. And it's that sort of healthy competition, isn't it? Cat and mouse, nip and tuck. If you're going to beat 
one certain time, I'm going to again come back and do it even better. Yeah, I mean, Thomas Howdle's flying as well at the moment, which is great to see. Um, he's, he's, he's really worked on his underwater skills, and look at this, he's, he's, he is flying. Absolutely flying. Let's check the clock here. It's going to be quick. 23-6-1. Nice from a little bit faster from the heats this morning. 7-100 uh, faster. But that's a big win for Thomas Howdle. He'll be really pleased to be national short course champion there. You can see the coach. I'm having a look on close. I can see my old coach and his coach now. Give me a little finger in the air. And um, another national title for Stockport Metro. And he will be really pleased with that. Swimming fast. Well, Luke Greenbank second, Nick Pyle third. Both of those two raising their game for this one, uh, managing to uh, get PBs themselves. But there's not much you can do if the person faster than you also is raising the bar. Thomas Howdell has done that, 23-6-1, and a half a second buffer in the end. He made it look very comfortable. Yeah, I mean, he's just got to try and convert this to long course now. He's got to try and... Obviously, the 100 backstroke, we need we need a 100 backstroker. I mean, we need this backstroker. I've mentioned it again already over this weekend for this relay team. We've got an unbelievable fly swimmer, unbelievable breaststroker, an amazing freestyler for the men's 4 by one medley. And backstroke is the slight weak, weak point. Luke, we can get Luke Greenbank firing, and we need him firing. We can get Thomas Howard firing. Nicholas Pyle could maybe do something for that 100 meter backstroke long course. We're talking Olympic gold here. That's what we're talking about. Not Olympic silver, not Olympic bronze, Olympic gold, if we can get that backstroke of firing. Well, favourite for this one coming uh, in the form of Canada's Kira Smith, who will uh, line up in lane four for this one, 24 years of age and getting a season's best earlier of 31.8. And the young English swimmers around her will be looking to challenge. One of the youngest of them is Elizane Pinfold, the city of Oxford in lane five, 14 years of age, a PB earlier on today of 31.85. And Anna Evans as well of Ellesmere College Titans is a name that's been doing the rounds for the last few years on the national scene in the lower age categories. And again, it's all about that transition, isn't it, as you're getting older, to uh, try and stamp your authority. The 15-year-old here coming with a season's best, 31.99. She can go quicker, but can she go quick enough to win this women's 50-meter breaststroke B final? There we go. B final, women's 50 metres breaststroke. Very strange style. And then before, Kira Smith. Coming all the way from Canada. She's got this high arm recovery on the breaststroke. If you have a look in this, the first golden lane there. Elbows almost coming out of the water. She's got to be a little bit careful not to get disqualified with that. She must, she must know what she's doing. Just about making it legit. She's going to win this. First, B final as well, 31.52 for Kira Smith. Yeah, PB in there for Elizabeth Pinfold, who touches in third overall as well. Rebecca Kleins of City of Leeds touches in in second. That's the first time that she's broken the 32 second mark, and she's done that handsomely as well with a time of 31.61. But it is indeed Kira Smith, 31.52, a season's best for the Canadian, and she takes that B final. You know, it's really great, John, that. The, all weekend so far we've been saying PB, season's best, PB, season's best. And at this time of the year, it's just, it's, it's just great to see it. it. You know, from the juniors all the way up to the seniors, we just see Max Litchfield do a personal best time, and obviously season's best time as well. Um, you know, it's, 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 just, it's just great to see. Well, it does show that those who uh, are wanting to save their big performance for the big occasion certainly are managing to do that, particularly the youngsters who, at the moment, are probably competing at the biggest stage they've been at so far. A little bit different for some of those taking part in this A final, though. And again, Kayla Sanchez is on the roster for this one, the Canadian in six. But we look at the Loughborough University trio that are split up by Kayla Sanchez's presence there in lanes four, five and seven. Imogen Clark, the quickest of the British swimmers this year, the only British swimmer actually to get under 30 seconds on short course this year. And earlier on today, she managed 29.8. The yeah. only one to do that. And, and really, you look at the form book and it's got to be hers. Yep. She won the 100 breaststroke last night and she did it in style as well in a, in a very, very strong field. 
she went out really strong and basically said to the rest of the girls, I am winning this race from the front and no one's going past me. And she executed a very strong 100 meter breaststroke last night. I expect her to win this 50 as well. Got Sarah Vasey next to her though in lane five, the Commonwealth Games gold medalist in this very event, obviously long course there. So don't, you can't count Sarah Vasey out. Imogen Clark with the superior turns perhaps. She's going to take this down. Katie Max in lane three from Stockport Metro. She had a good uh, heat swim this morning, 31.14. It's a personal best time for her. So she's in good form as well. Here's say, uh, Kayla Sanchez, always smiling. And why not in the form that she's in? Why not? Three world junior records already. That is, that is some weekend she's having so far. And it's not over yet. And Kayla Sanchez, one of the uh, remaining ones in the pool who are yet to get under 30 seconds. So it'd be nice to see a couple join Imogen Clark in that respect and they're going to have to get that sort of time as well. Imogen Clark, see English record holder with that PB she got in 2016. She'll be gone for that tonight. She'll want that. She's got, just like Max Lutchfield had my British record, she's going to have her own British record here in her sights. And if she doesn't do it, again like Max Lichfield, I think she'll be a little disappointed. So let's see if she can get across that mark. She was great in that 100 last night, really strong and powerful. Let's see if she can do it in this 50. Well, the two-year anniversary for that record is on Tuesday. So she'd uh, like to make sure it doesn't quite reach two complete years. And already she's gone off like a shot in lane four. Kayla Sanchez hasn't started too bad either. The first turn being made there by Imogen Clark in quick time as well. And the time she's trying to beat, 29.64, that is the current standing British record. Yeah, you can see she's got superior starts and turns, hasn't she, Imogen Clark? That's why she's so quick, short course, compared to the rest of the girls. Let's see what time she can post. 29.43. That's a new British record for Imogen Clark. And a new European record as well. There's our first, first British senior record of the competition. And I knew she had that in her sights. And the way she swam last night, it, it just felt like she was going to do it. Well, never seemed in doubt she was going to win the race right from the start, the way she went into the pool and took to it so smoothly. But uh, fantastic stuff there. 0.9 ahead of Sarah Vasey, who comes in in second spot. She herself, as a Loughborough swimmer, gets a PB. But uh, the rest of the swimmers still waiting to break the 30-second mark. Just shows you how difficult it actually is to do. Imogen Clark there, 29-4-3. And a uh, bit ambiguous, that ER, but I'm pretty sure that's English record. And uh, European record, she has also now got as well. So Imogen Clark, 29-4-3, broken her own European record here at Ponds Falls tonight. An excellent swim from the Loughborough athlete. Yeah, thank you very much, Jonathan. Well, what a swim that was from Imogen Clark. We, we expected something from her. She's been in great form this week already. We saw her mm. last night in the 50. Yep. And it just looks so, so good. And yep. it's difficult, isn't it, when you already have a record. To, and it, when it's held for a little while as well, it's almost it's quite difficult to raise yourself back to that sort of level. But what a swim that is. Yeah, it's, been, it's been two years since she's done that first time. I think it's two years and a couple of days or something I was, I, I was hearing in my ear. So um, she'll be really, I guess, relieved to do that because to go two years without doing the best time, it, that kind of sucks, right? I mean, that's, 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 you know, that must have been playing in her mind all the time. But we knew she was going to go quick. She had great 100 metres last night. You know, she looked strong and powerful. You can see she's a big, strong girl, can't you? Big, strong girl. Big, strong, powerful in that, that tough field in that 100 breaststroke last night. But she dominated the race. She was so confident, so powerful down the first 50 metres. And I knew tonight she'd have that 50 metres uh, breaststroke British record in her sights. Yeah, and absolutely smashed it as well. Like, two tenths of a second. Yeah. I mean, you can't really go too wrong with that. She's swimming very, very well and very, very quick indeed. Record breakingly quick, in fact. Next up in the pool, we're going to have some medal summaries for you very, very shortly. But next up in the pool will be the uh, the, hundred, the 200 meter fly where we'll see James Guy back in action. And yes. He's got a little bit of battle on. He's not going to have it all his own way. Matt Dara is a very good swimmer from Canada, very experienced at 200 fly. He's swimming at the Pan Packs and yep. in the NCAA scene in America. He, he's yep. a dangerous swimmer, very experienced.
favourites as well. Yeah, I mean, James Guy's going to win it. I mean, uh, I, I mean, I know we've got to build it up, and we've got to. No, say, of course, but, but James Guy's going to win this, I think. I mean, he, yeah. he just looks so cool in the war. I just love the way James Guy. So he's probably my favourite swimmer in the British team to watch in, in, in terms of just how it looks in the water, the technique. It just makes it look so smooth and comfortable. He just glides across the water. Um, I don't have a crush on James. It sounds like I've got I've got a, some sort of swimming technique crush. That's what I've got. But he just glides across the water, you know, just floats across. Yeah. And he's got these big hands and big long arms and powerful arms to drive his stroke forward. Um, and James Guy's going to win this tonight, um, unless something disastrous happens. He wasn't anywhere near his quickest uh, in the heats either. I think yeah. that's fair to say. He was. It was one of those tactical heats from him. Earlier. I think it was a little bit of a tactical swim from James uh, this morning but he's got you know he's got he's not got a busy schedule but he I think he wants to hit this final hard tonight tuna fly is not something he does very often I mean it's obviously short course you can have a bit more of a, a, a play around with it I guess um, but he's going to want to go quick tonight um, and he's going to want to go fast he's going to definitely want to win it uh, in a quick time still got two more individual races to come after that as well we'll see Holly Hibbert go in the 400 free and Jordan Sloan and Yuri Kassil battling it out in the 100 free. Two international swimmers there, one from Ireland and yep. one from Canada as well. Plenty still to come, and that's without even factoring in. We've still got the women's 100 metres yep. individual medley where Kayla Sanchez is targeting her second world junior record of the evening. Yep. Yeah, I mean, let's keep our eyes open for Kayla. 100 IM, it's 57.75, I believe, the world junior record, so we'll keep our eyes out for that. She's broke three already, so why not four? Let's keep our eyes. I'm looking forward to watching Holly Hibbert. Um, she went her personal best time last month in 4.02. I think she's going to want to go under four minutes. I think she's going to be, be pretty special, I think right? that's going to be, yeah, 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 that'd be, that'd be fantastic. We've got that men's under freestyle, of course. We've got Jordan Yuri, uh, a little bit of a head-to-head -head battle there. That, that will be closer. That will be definitely closer. Then we've got the relays at the end just to kick off, uh, to finish off, sorry. Um, a great evening of swimming. Yeah, it should be fantastic. As we see our medal presentations making their way onto the stage here in Ponds Forge. First up is the presentation for the... Uh, 200 individual medley and uh, you can see Max Litchfield there waiting to receive his gold medal but before that the junior medals Pierce Greening from Cockermouth picking up his junior bronze Thomas Dean uh, senior bronze as well but for an 18 year old who's made a real breakthrough this year European juniors was where he really sort of made his name and he is going to be a real threat over these coming years. Still only 18, which is relatively young for a male swimmer in particular. And he, I mean, you, you take a look at the build, he is built like a, like a, a big lad, swimmer, isn't, he? isn't he? Yeah, he's a big lad. Um, yeah, I mean, just got to keep, keep working hard, keep training hard. He's the British swimming breakthrough swimmer this year, Thomas Dean. Rising star, I think, whatever they call it. Emerging athlete, I think, is the official title. But Joe Litchfield there picking up his. Uh, Due as senior silver and a word as well for Jason Robson, another junior silver for him. He's picking up so many medals at the moment. And of course, Nicholas Skelton, who we've seen plenty of times on this podium, getting his junior golds. Max Litchfield picking up the big prize in the 200 meters individual medley. But uh, the real winner, of course, tonight in the 200 IM is our own James Goddard. No, holding on to that record. <laughs> <laughs> No, of course not. It's a great, it's a great swim for Max. And it's wonderful, as you mentioned earlier, to see him, see him back to his best because yep. he has had such a tough year. It's never easy to have such a horrible injury, especially when that keeps you out of a major championships as well. That's yep. difficult not only to deal with physically because you know you're injured, but to deal with mentally, that it's it's horrible, isn't it, to miss out on a on a championship, especially like the Commonwealth Games where people. Yep. They know they have so much fun there. I know on the Gold Coast, uh, outdoor pool, Commonwealth Games. Uh, yeah, he'll be he'll be devastated about that. And to come back and bounce back and show the you know I've used this word a lot with the Litchfields um, resilience. They're really resilient. So it's the steel, tough, that Sheffield steel. steel. They're so hard to beat. Um, you know those type of swimmers are really really hard to beat. And Max has showed some great resilience, some great mental strength. Um, and he's looking great. He's looking great in the pool. Looking great in the water. And he does have to show a fair amount of mental strength. He's, he's had an awful lot of fourths in his career, which sounds awful to sort of point out, but it just shows the mental strength that he keeps on getting better and keeps on trying to improve. Force at World Championship level, force at Olympic level. It's it's the worst position in sport to finish, yep. but he still keeps getting better. Yeah, I know how it feels. <laughs> it, 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 it's only, yep. only going to get there for him, isn't it? He's, he's still so. growing and still getting better. I hope so. I really hope so. Um, he's, uh, so by his interview, he's a really down-to-earth young man. Uh, um, very humble, trains hard, and if he does get there, he deserves every single bit of credit. Medal here for Betsy Wizard of Northampton. 
Emily Large picking up the senior bronze. I feel strange calling Emily Large a senior swimmer. She's been around so long in the junior years. Very, very promising young swimmer. Yeah, she's, she's swimming well. Junior silver is going to City of Leicester's Maisie Elliott. And Laura Stevens again with another medal. Been impressed with Laura Stevens this weekend already. The turn of fly gold and then this hundred fly. If, if it was another few metres, she would have taken out Waffle because Waddle was uh, what was fading that last five or ten metres and Stevens was coming back at her. Well, it looks like Marie Waddle is barely making this ceremony. A huge congratulations, by the way, to Sophie Freeman. Well done, uh, Sophie. With that. Uh, with Here that gold medal there for the juniors, 28-0-1. What a time for the four senior-olds. Marie Wattle is ready to receive her gold medal just in the nick of time. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, she needed a few more seconds to uh, to win her race. 26-46, half a second in front of Laura Stevens. That was her race right from the get-go, wasn't it? Yes, it was, yeah. I really like this lady's butterfly. She technically looks superb through the water. Very, very tall, isn't she? Like the long limbs, really long legs, long arms. Look at the size of those legs. Yeah, it's worth remembering Huge, that Sophie legs. Freeman still is only 14. Plenty of growth still to come yep. for Sophie Freeman. But uh, still swimming remarkably quickly for yep. her for her young age. And that definitely needs some uh, some respect in its own way. Because sure. you remember coming through at 14 years of age and sort of trying to bloody the nose of some of these seniors. 2801 is one way to get yourself recognised. Definitely, yeah. It's uh, it's a challenge for these youngsters, but it's a, it's, it's a challenge I'm sure they'll be enjoy. And it, it's almost like they have less pressure when they're racing the seniors. It's almost like you, you, we can try and get that scalp nothing to lose. of the seniors. Yeah, nothing to lose. Let's try and get that scalp of the seniors. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see. And the juniors have been killing it this weekend. They've been so good. They've been PBs all over the place, records and the season's best. And if they can keep that going um, till next next summer when they're going to be doing the national age groups in, uh, in, in August right here, it's going to be uh, fantastic for the future of British swimming. Yeah, well, indeed. And Nicholas Skelton here picking up another medal. He is, he must be going home oh, from this yeah, weekend again, with, yeah. well, he didn't need a whole new cabinet. Only the bronze this time, Nicholas. Come on, get a move on, mate. <laughs> no, he's been fantastic, hasn't he? City of Oxford as well, producing a great little swimmer. Commemorative bronze going to Hamilton UAE's Marcus Tambling, that club set up out in the Middle East. Quite a few of our uh, young swimmers going out and uh, swimming over there for Hamilton. Ruben Vista is uh, about to pick up the junior silver. The uh, senior bronze, meanwhile, went to Nick Pyle in that final. Yep. Luke Greenbank with the silver. 50, very much not his sort of distance. He much yeah. prefers the longer races. Yeah, the but longer it goes, the better he gets, yeah. But still not a, a bad time, meanwhile. 24 11, he's yeah. going to have to be pretty happy with that. Personal best is 200 last night and winning the gold, 151-1, and then tonight, personal best again in the 50, 24 one So it's you know it's looking good, looking good for Luke. He's progressing forward, which is why great swim from Thomas Howley, gold medal. Yeah, David O'Loughlin picking up the junior gold medal. Still just 14 years of age, and. Uh, the gold medal going to Thomas Howard or Stockport Metro, and this is something that you profiled quite a bit in the uh, in the preview and indeed this morning. Yeah. A little bit of personal knowledge as well because of yeah. the knowledge of Stockport Metro and indeed his yeah. coach. But you sort of had an inkling that that sort of swim was coming from Thomas Howard. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been down to the pool at Stockport a couple of, well, uh, maybe four or five days of the last week and watched them train firsthand, um, and I can really see Thomas Howard was moving well. Um, Feeling good, I had a little chat with him as well before this competition. He's feeling confident, he's feeling you know, ready to go. I think he's had a little sneaky rest coming into this meet because he was feeling so good. I wanted think the coach to really back it up. Yeah, I think the coach wanted to give him that confidence to come in and win a national short course title, uh, which he's done. He's you know he's national champion now, which is uh, which is sensational. You know, fastest backstroker in Britain. He can have that claim now for the next you know next year. Um, and the, the, the club will be pleased. I know his coach will be pleased, and Thomas Hadley can see. Um, Big smile. Yeah, and Big you've smile. got to be happy when you when you know you're feeling good, especially at this time of year. We, we yeah. can't really overemphasize this point. This is not really a swim meet where we're expecting to see these sort of best swims from a lot of these guys, but the fact that they're pulling them out now, it just bodes so well for a few months' time when they're going to have to come to trials for, yeah. obviously, the World Championships is next year. Yeah. Plenty of massive competitions next year, and they're looking in pretty good shape for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, I, I'm, I'm always, I always keep an eye on the juniors as well. I love watching the juniors, um, seeing who's up and coming and coming through. And I've been so impressed with the juniors this weekend so far. Next medal ceremony 
is upon us. Katie Matt's about to receive her bronze medal. Yeah, personal best time for Katie Matz as well, so she's swimming quick. And uh, in the 50 breast as well, it's, it's always going to be tough, wasn't it, against, against Imogen Clark, didn't she swim so phenomenally well? Yeah. Yeah, you can see she was in great form. Another City of Oxford swimmer. Yeah, performing pretty well. The medal. Sarah Vay's getting silver as well. She's had a really good year actually in total. Obviously that Commonwealth gold yep. back in uh, back in the early months of 2018 in yep. the 50 is really acting as a bit of a spur for her. She looks in pretty good nick, and she can continue this sort of form. Yep. She's going to be a real swimmer to contend with in the breaststroke next year. Yeah, for sure. And this is a this is the reason why it's the difference between 25 meter and, and, and 50 meter, the long course and short course, is so different. You know, because Imogen Clark's got a great start and great turns, and Sarah Vasey's aren't as good as hers. So Imogen Clark will win the short course, and then actually Sarah Vasey's swimming speed is probably a little bit quicker, and that's why she wins Commonwealth gold in the long course ball. Well, this is why we we never see now Adam Peaty swim short course. He's quite open about that. Doesn't, <laughs> even, doesn't though like British, even though he's got a British and European record. Well, but that's because he's swimming. I mean, he hasn't got the best. You know, we all know he's not got the best start and turns in the world by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but his swimming speed is just outrageously quicker than anybody else. So he can kind of get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not a stroke that he likes swimming when it comes to short course. He openly says he hates it. He's yeah. not about swimming short course whatsoever. He is all about that World Championships and Olympics in particular. Yeah, if, if there was a 100 metre swimming pool, it yeah. would be frightening. He'd be so far ahead, it'd be ridiculous. It really yeah, would, it wouldn't it? It'd be, it'd be yeah. terrifying. And we've got there one of his uh, one of his teammates coming up very shortly. Our next race in the water is the men's 200 fly. We'll see the B final, and then James Guy will go in that one, taking on Mac Dara in a bit of an international battle. And uh, we're about to see our B final coming up behind us here. The athletes are about to emerge in the 200 fly. We saw a brilliant race in this in the women's yesterday. And the thing is about 200 fly is because of the length of it and because of the battle that you've got to go through personally, you can really see some long, long battles emerge through the centre of the pool and it can quite often be quite tight. But it's difficult at times to see who's next to you in a fly as well. Yeah, and if you, I mean, you, you might have noticed James Guy this morning because he, he is a racer. I mean, that is it. He's a racer. You might have noticed him this morning as he was coming down, I think the last length of his turn of fly in the heat. He had a good look around, both left and right, uh, to see where everyone was. So he could just cruise it home and be in control of, of, of breaking of, every rule in the coaching manual. Well, the, well this is it. I know it's, it's, it's actually a bad advert. <laughs> it's a bad advert for, uh, for all the youngsters out there because I do it as well. And when I swim with my youngsters sometimes at, at, at the local competitions and I'm looking around and making sure I win, because a lot of those competitions <laughs> are points events, you know, so you yeah, just have yeah. to win. I get out, they're like, James, you tell us not to look around when we're swimming. I'm like, oh, yeah, I should practice what I preach, shouldn't I, really? <laughs> so it's all about the Ws, mate, all about the Ws. I can't help it, I have to look, I can't help it. <laughs> Our next event is in the water now. It's Men's 200 Meter Butterfly B final, and it's coming up for you right now. We'll hand you over to our race commentator, Jonathan Bell. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, with this event, we now reach the halfway point of the uh, night session. Still more to come in the form of the... Uh, 400, women's 400 free, the men's 100 free. We've got the uh, women's 100 IM as well and a few relays before we complete the night session. So still a lot to get our teeth into, including these two finals in the men's 200 metre butterfly event where the uh, superior starts here have been made in the central lanes. We're looking at lane five on Michael Gunning, but there's uh, a couple just lingering on the outer lanes as well. They're not too far away, and actually on the far outer lane, William McIntyre, lane eight, he leads the way after the first quarter. Yeah, here we go for the two men's two metres butterfly. You've got to be nice and long and smooth down the first 100 metres. You can't overspin or force the stroke too much, otherwise you are going to pay for it down the back 50 metres. Nice turning from Joseph Porter in the centre of the pool, really using that underwater work to his advantage. Got to stay relaxed down this first 100, don't force that stroke too much 56.41 for Joseph Porter McIntyre in second then Gunning in third incredible uh, effort this from Ruben Visitor in lane three 15 years of age the rest of the swimmers are either Sam Daly 17 years old or the rest are junior yeah. so Ruben yeah, Visitor here really pulling his weight he's second 
yeah, yeah. I've seen him about. I've seen him about on circuit. He's a he's a talented young swimmer from the city of Sheffield in that very famous red hat in lane number three. And he's looking good, isn't he? What's his personal best? is 201.37. He could squeak under this two-minute mark, which would be a sensational swim for a 15-year-old. Come on, Ruben. That would be something, wouldn't it, for the City of Sheffield swimmer in his home, Paul. So we've got a big eye here on Joseph Porter of Stockport Metro, who's tearing this up. The season's best he got this morning, but his personal best is uh, 0.74 quicker than that, and he Come has on, managed to beat it as well. The Ruben Vizder agonisingly just above two minutes. Nevertheless, a PB for him by over a second. Sam Daly in third. Uh, Joseph Porter, of course, with the number one next to his name, is going to get the credit in that B final but uh, Ruben Vizda deserves a great mention as well. The man that you can see to the right of the screen, you can see the size difference between the two. And ultimately, there wasn't too much in it between Porter and Ruben Vizda. But it is Joseph Porter that takes it. 158.46, the winning time in the B final. Oh, a super swim there from Joseph Porter to get the win in that one and some of our youngsters really performing well as well, which is what we love to see. I'd like to say we're going to be joined by uh, Imogen Clark very, very shortly, the uh, gold medalist in the breaststroke that we just saw, the 50 metre breaststroke, a terrific swim as well from Imogen, breaking her own British record, a swim that myself and James here really, really enjoyed and a swim that we're going to talk back through with the winner of it. I'd like to say Imogen joins us now down by the poolside. Imogen, first of all, huge congratulations, fantastic swim and breaking your own British record from a couple of years ago. That must feel pretty special. Yeah, it's pretty good. I wasn't really expecting to do that today. You know, we're in the thick of training, so to do that is brilliant. I'm really happy with that. Yeah, um, start and turns were amazing. Like, is that something that they work on a lot in training? Um, yeah, we always practice technique because at the end of the day, that's the thing that's going to slow you down. If you've got so much power but can't do your technique, you'll fail. So, yeah, we do a lot of that. <laughs> I wanted to ask you quickly about the 100 last night that you were amazing in as well, by the way. Did you, what was the, like, the tactics in that? Because you went out so quick and you just held off everybody in a really strong field. Yeah, I mean, I know I've got this natural speed to do that. Um, I've been practicing different techniques of how to actually race 100. It's normally a bit of a downfall that I die So at the end. So, yeah, it's just practicing how to control the first 50, really. And you mentioned you're in this crazy heavy training at the moment. So many of the swimmers here are. How much of a boost does this give you heading into a pretty busy 2019 that you're able to swim some of your best <laughs> swims ever in, at this sort of time? Yeah, really happy actually. I'm really shocked with how I swim here. I've been in such, we're in such of the thick of it at the minute um, and will not be going easy till April. So it makes me feel really good that I can still perform when I'm tired. Yeah, we wish you obviously all the best of luck for April. Do, do the folks at Loughborough allow you any time off over Christmas and New Year? Will you get out the pool at all? Um, a little bit. I think I've got a few <laughs> days off, yeah. Well, we wish you all the best for Christmas and New Year and all the best for the start of next year as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Imogen <laughs> Clark. Imogen, a terrific swimmer. We saw her yesterday. We've seen her today deliver again and again some magnificently quick times. And it's nice to hear her almost surprised at how well she's doing at this yeah. meet. Yeah, I mean, she's, I'm really I'm surprised myself. She's saying that she's still in really heavy, hard training. You wouldn't see it in the pool because she floats across that water, you know, like a swan. It's, uh, it's incredible. And I had to ask about that 100 last night because it was so impressive. In that, in that such busy field, in that such stacked field, I just had to ask, you know, how you, you went out so fast and you held off everybody and you looked so strong down the, you know, down the back end. And, she, and she, she was spot on, you know, she's a sprinter. She had to get out there quick and dominate the race from the start. And that's exactly what she did. So she's tactically, um, you know, a very great swimmer and uh, I'm very pleased for her. Yeah, to do the double in the 50 and the 100 at this meet is really, really impressive. There are some star press strokers. Uh, in the women's category and they're almost following in the footsteps of the men's category it's been so impressive in breaststroke over the past four or five years yeah, it has, and yeah. it's great to see the women now joining that it's some real real stars in the next couple of years emerging which is lovely to see now a final women uh, men's 200 flyer We're about to see james guy for the second time this weekend 200 fly is one of his star events what are you expecting from him a, a, a win uh how quick can he go I think he can go quick, uh, and that's about it, really. I mean, we, we only be, it's just because he just looks so smooth in this water, in the water. He's going to have a little bit of a challenge from Thomas Beely, who swim well, and Plymouth Leander. I've got to give a big shout out to Plymouth Leander as well. They're producing some 
good quality fly swimmers. We've seen the uh, you know the, the proof in the pudding with the uh, with the girls, 200 meter butterfly and 100 meter butterfly as well, um, picking up loads of medals there, golds included. So maybe Thomas Beely, he's got a PB of uh, personal best time 155.01. Uh, James says James guys is 154.8. He's going to go quicker than that tonight, I would imagine. So Thomas Beely is going to have to pull something right out of the bag. Mac Dara from uh, the HPC Ontario, 155.45 is his personal best. These boys are going to have to step it up, I think, if we're going to want to challenge James Guy. A word as well, just before we head to our commentator, Jonathan. Edward Mildred in this final, lane number six, 14 years of age from Northampton, coached by Jackie Marshall. All the best for young Edward in this one. We'll hand you over to our race commentator as we see James Guy take to the water once again in this men's 200 butterfly final. Well, it's interesting there, uh, just seeing the build-up to this one. Thomas Beely trying to put the boot on the other foot, I think, for James Guy, who we saw last night. Not only uh, take his time before his race, but explain to us afterwards that uh, that's what he does. And he will be in his own frame of mind right now, set for this one. But Thomas Beely thought, you know what, I'm going to take my T-shirt off last for this one. We'll see if there are uh, any mind games there that are able to see the Plymouth Leander man triumph in this final which is the men's 200 meter butterfly a final so we're underway and james guy getting a, a time this morning two seconds slower than that of his pb which he recorded last month in stockport at the stockport metro at november short course meet it is the quickest time that any british swimmer has got over short course so far this year and it's a really tasty battle on our hands. We're looking at lane seven as well. Joe Litchfield's got off to a decent start, hasn't he? Yeah, in the first you know quarter. what? We, we might have a look to Joe Litchfield here because he's, he's a very, very quality, good quality swimmer all round. You know, we've just seen him pick up a silver in the uh, two meters individual medley. So we might shouldn't count him out, but I mean, just look at James, guys. He's such a classy swimmer. Staying close to him though is Thomas Beely, Plymouth Leander, pulling out some great two meter butt vice swimmers so far. Well, Thomas Beely and Joe Litchfield were first and second respectively at the British Swimming Summer Championships in the uh, summer and James Guy of course wasn't at that event so uh, this just adds uh, something different to the complexion of this race. Edward Mildred you can see in the blue cap as well that Steve mentioned beforehand in lane six. He has the uh, British junior record of 157.52 and uh, well I mean is he going to surpass that even further? Got it? earlier on today and there's a possibility that he may well extend it how good would that be but final 50 meters we're into now james guy very much in command and it's thomas Beely in second place but look how tight it is behind that we've not really mentioned the two lanes on the near side matthew donville in lane two he missed his race earlier on he's in the pool now and he's looking fresh maybe for a third spot yeah we're gonna have to look at the uh, british record here for the uh, for the men's tournament butterfly it's gonna be so close i think he's uh powering home now James Guy it's going to be quick his personal best 154 I mean he's, we all knew he was going to destroy that 152.08 it's not quite a British record still a decent time though 152.08 well 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 inside his PB I mean that is great stuff and you look at that British record actually Joseph Roebuck set that 2009 yeah. That shows how difficult the record it is to be. Well, it, was, it was a suit era as well, wasn't it? It was when you could wear those fancy suits, so uh, Joe would have got a, a, a big boost in that. And 151.27, James 152.0. It's, pr it's practically the same time, if not quicker, by James Guy. If he, if he it. And James is happy as well. You know, he splashed the water there. He hit the water, nodding his head to his, uh, to his coach. And James Guy is really pleased with that. Well, we're looking at a Mildred here, 156.83. That looks like another British junior record there wow, from Edward yeah. Mildred. Wow, 156.8 from the 15-year-old. That's quick. That is quick. 156.8, Edward Mildred. Congratulations to him and Northampton Swimming Club. That is, that is special. Great young talent coming through. Well, six of the top seven there, all getting personal bass. And uh, nice. James Guy, impressive at the top, but Edward Mildred, I mentioned his name earlier on when I was uh, 
on in-venue duties here at Ponds Forge. He really is one to look out for. So Betsy Wizard, the female, young Northampton swimmer. Edward Mildred, the male one. And uh, yeah, definitely in the next couple of years, we need to be keeping an eye out for those emerging on the scene. We're saying that for a lot of people. It has to be said. It's uh, not exactly a small list of upcoming talent, but Edward Mildred definitely up towards the top of that. As we now uh, move on to the women. A bit longer this, 400 metre freestyle. B final uh, coming up. 400 not deemed long enough to be swum just once in a day James so you're doing it in the morning and then you've got to come back and do it again in the evening how are you preparing in between uh, lots of rest um, a good swim down I mean these guys have obviously had to swim hard this morning and they need to get back in the pool straight after the race and swim off that lactic acid that's what we do in a swim down we you know we, we put bits of bursts of speed in there and you, you don't just swim slow for half an hour you've got to put a little bit of pace in there so you flush that lactic acid out of your system so they'll have had a good swim down planned by them and the coaches you know it's not just a dive oh just dive in the pool and swim for 10 minutes you know you've got to have something planned for that as well and then back to the hotel get something good sweet for lunch some of these girls might have had a little snooze for an hour or so a couple of hours but just to chill out chill that mind out mentally relax physically relax and then go again tonight. Need a good warm up for this final session. And then get in race mode. And just looking at uh, some of those that have managed to really pull out all the stops earlier on today. The quickest time from the morning was Jemima Hall of Wickham District, 4.15 at 6.2. But uh, I mean, you're looking at some of those who didn't quite get the personal best. Molly Wright can swim a couple of seconds quicker than that. Betsy Wizard, I mean, we've just mentioned Edward Mildred, and Betsy Wizard, the two young Northampton swimmers, she's 15 years of age, PB of 4.12.51, and she went three and a half seconds slower than that, so she should really be up in contention. Magic, that, isn't it? Magic. See what you did there, James. Uh -huh. Great name. Could have a lot of fun with this name, especially if she wins. Come on, Betsy, I'm cheering you on here. In the minute she is uh, leading the way after the first quarter there, split just over 101. And it is a bit lopsided towards those uh, on the far side of the pool. You've got the green caps down the middle, one for Wickham District in lane four in Jemima Hall, the other for Nova Centurion and Molly Wright. She got a season's best this morning of 4.15.83. Pretty tight in the heat, just two seconds separating ten, nine, sorry, swimmers. Just two seconds, two and a bit seconds. That's pretty close over a 400. I mean, that's that leaves the door open for anyone to really take control of this race and uh, grab it by the scruff of the neck and make it their own. Let's not forget as well that it's uh, junior and senior medals on offer in the BNA finals and so it's not really a direct shootout in that sense in terms of competition between Betsy Wizard and the likes of Molly Wright in there but I mean you, you just want to beat whoever's in the pool around you don't you James and then you'll see what the organizers say afterwards about this where you it. finish yeah just swim your best and then it's perfectly spearheaded at the minute isn't it this final is perfectly spearheaded which is, again is quite rare especially for a B final but it's perfectly spearheaded with Jemima Hall from Wickham District leading the way teammate on one side Caitlin Mackey and another green hat of Molly Wright on the other side from Nova Centurion so it's a little green army at the minute leading the way in this women's B final of the fawn of freestyle and beautifully poised this almost going directly to form but now you can see three lots of three beginning to break out and it's that central trio we'll be keeping our eye on it's the Peas in a pod, if you like, the three yep. green hats there. And it's lane five, Molly Wright, who's now holding the upper hand. At some point, each of those three have led. And uh, Kelly McCarr will be hoping that she'll be next in line for that. But Molly Wright at the moment in charge at a good time of the race. 100 metres to go for these young ladies. There's some moves being made in the outside lanes as well. Perhaps in lane seven, Mia Slevin. Down here in lane one, Nicole Ryan from the City of Oxford. I mentioned their names a few times, haven't we? City of Oxford seem to be pulling out some swims. City of Oxford in this blue hat down here. Nicole Ryan. And over there in lane seven, Mia Slevin, Deventio Swim Club. She is making moves. 
Yes, it's seriously good here from uh, Mia Slevin. I mean, her, she her herself, 15 years of age. PB this morning, 4.16.53, and she's got the wind in her sails, hasn't she? She's yeah. using that time earlier as a token of momentum and really challenging Molly Wright, who is five years older than her, but in the pool, there is not much splitting them at all. Mia Slevin finishing really well. What a mature swim. She's going to beat this 4.16 that she went easily for. 13.54 for the Deventio swimmer. Wow. Well, we'll talk about Betsy Wizard coming into this. Mia Slevin is the one who's going to grab the headlines at the end of that B final. That is tremendous stuff from the 15-year-old. 4.13.5.4. Molly Wright second for Nova Centurion. I mean, it was hardly a bad swim from her either. She was just outside of her PB. She has got a season's best from that swim as Molly Wright. And Nicole Ryan from City of Oxford completes the fastest three. 4.15.1. So the confirmation of those results up on the screen for you now. You can see how close it really was at the front there. Mia Slevin and Molly Wright. Molly Wright almost uh, one of the uh, only remaining member of that original trio up towards the front managing to stay there because Caitlin Mackay and Jemima Hall both dropped out of the top three ultimately. But we're really looking forward to the A final coming up now, James. And uh, Holly Hibbert is in there. She's got the fastest British time of the year, 4.02. 2-5, she was 8 seconds away from that earlier on, so really she's saving herself for tonight Absolutely, she's uh, she's got the potential tonight, I think, to go something quick and I think under 4 minutes is her little target in her mind I've, I've got no doubt about it. That's what that's what it is. I, and I and I you know I, I speak regularly with her coach. She's my my ex coach. I don't even need to speak to to him to know that the target tonight for Holly Hibbert is to break that four minutes. You can see the British record by Cho Jackson, 354 again in 2009 during that suit era. Still a lot of records. A few world records still going from that era as well. So it's, uh, it was an important period of swimming, a bit of a revolutionary part of the swimming history. And now, we, as you can see, we can only wear the, uh, the boys going to wear the shorts and the girls has got to be the, uh, the vest to me. There's Holly Hibbert. Uh, on paper, she's by far and away the strongest candidate to win this. So maybe Leah Crisp a bit surprised that she's going to be in the fastest seeded lane after her PB today of 4.10.33. At that time was enough to put her well in the mix of the top 10 best this year. She's now ranked sixth out of the Brits for 2018 based on that. And Holly Hibbert, such a powerful swimmer, will be very much expecting to reign supreme here in the women's 400 meter freestyle A final. What a start that was from Holly Hibbert. Yeah, great start there in the centre of the pool. Holly Hibbert also down here in lane three had a good start, Abby Wood. Uh, I think maybe Abby Wood could be the one that could contend with Holly Hibbert. She got a personal best of 406.43. She did that this year as well, so perhaps Abby Wood can mount some kind of challenge and not let Holly Hibbert get it all her own way. I think it's going to be the, it looks already like these two are going to be the ones breaking away and doing their own thing. It's, it's really tricky for Leah Crisp, isn't it, here now as well, because Abby Wood and Holly have, uh, have took it a little bit easier in the morning. It's allowed Leah Crisp to come in that centre lane, and already she's getting that backwash from the kick of the, the two more senior girls. Yeah, for one foreign swimmer taking part in this race in lane seven it's the Australian Shani Robinson from uh, St Peter's 
who managed to make the final of the World Junior Championships in 2017. She has a PB of 4.10.53, so I wonder if she'll be able to jostle towards the front position. She's at fourth at this relatively early stage, but, I mean, you talk about how important the start is, and just from that dive in the pool and the consequential turn since, it's Holly Hibbert and Abbey Road already in the two-horse race. Yep, and it's kind of how we predicted. 128.9, okay, so they're probably going to turn 159 at the 200 meter mark. And like I've already mentioned, the top four of freestyle swimmers like to even or sometimes negative split their 400. So what that means, a negative split is the second 200 of the 400 is faster than the first 200. Even split would be both the same. But, uh, and here we go, look, here we go. 158.9, that was a 30 second 50 there for Holly Hibbert. And just starting to make a move away from Abbey Wood as well. So 158.9, that's, that's, that's a good time for Holly to build on here, to get under that four-minute marker. It's going to be tricky, though. She's got to come back basically two minutes, hasn't she, to, to get under. Well, that's split there from uh, Holly Hibbert. We'll wait and see what the next one is, but that was three seconds better than at this stage of uh, her best time of the year. And uh, she's still maintaining on that sort of form now, that two and a half seconds superior. So we're certainly looking at a potential PB here for Holly Hibbert and the yeah. chance to break four minutes. Yeah, sorry, she's kicking harder as well, Holly. She wasn't kicking like this in the first two. And you can see whenever she breathes to one side, she puts this little burst of a kick in. You have a little look in now, a little kick, see? Kicks there. She wasn't doing that then in the first 200. So that was the plan to... Uh, and now she stopped again. Okay, interesting. <laughs> she was doing it, I promise. But it, yeah, yeah, you could see the first 200 float there. She's doing it again. The, the first 200, she was cruising, and then that second 200, turning on those legs a little bit just to try and get a bit of an extra zip, swimming right against that lane rope. Sometimes swimmers do this, you know, because they're so used to it in training, swimming round in a circle, you know, swimming round up down, one lane rope down the other. Sometimes gets just get used to swimming along the lane rope. You know, in training, you're not used to swimming down the middle. So you see this quite often with swimmers. She's turning three, 3.30 with 50 metres to go. She's got to come back really powerful, really strong here if she wants to get under this four-minute marker. She's got to come back 29 point, 29.3 she's got to come back. She can do that. She can do it if she works hard down this back 50 metres. She can really push on. She can get under this four-minute marker. I'd like to see her kick a little bit harder, but here she goes. Holly Hibbert's going to win this, there's no doubt about it. She might just be outside. Can she get in there? Get into the wall, Holly. 359.83. She gets under the four-minute marker, and there's no doubt she will be pleased with that. Well, I can see a Stockport coach with his navy blue tracksuit on with his arm up in the air. He may well be a teammate, actually, but either way, he's delighted for Holly Hibbert. I'm sure she will be as well the first time that the bronze medalist from the European Championships has managed to get under four minutes in a short-course format. And she uh, goes and uh, congratulates there Abby Wood, who managed to get second spot, 4.03.3 for her. That's a personal best as well by over three seconds. Polly Holden gets third on 4.07.32. But Holly Hibbert, sub, four minutes. So terrific stuff there from the Stockport Metro swimmer. And that is a great way to conclude your Saturday night's worth of swimming in Sheffield. The Swim England National Winter Championships 2018. As ever, thank you very much for joining us on the BBC Sport website, the app, and also the red button as well. As we just see Holly Hibbert of Stockport Metro manage to get that. Break the duck of four minutes in the women's 400 metre freestyle. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Yeah, still plenty to come tonight. Holly Hibbert with a brilliant swim there for Stockport Metro. Very happy James Goddard, I imagine. A very, very happy Holly Hibbert as well. 3.59.83. Word as well from Leah Crisp in lane four there. Obviously got battered away by Abby Wood and Holly Hibbert in the early going. Still went quicker than her massive personal best this morning as well. 4.08 for Leah Crisp. Ended up in fourth position. That is a really, really good swim from the city of Leeds swimmer there. Still got a couple of races to come. The men's 100 free and the women's 100 IM. Then the relays to round us off. And really excited for these these two quick races to run off the individuals and then of course the relays but yep. Jordan Sloan and Yuri Casil we imagine it will be between those two yep. 
Well, we've seen Yuri Casillo a little bit over the course of this meet. He looks quick. He does look quick, yeah. Um, we can see the Canadian uh, contingent have got great skills. You know, great, really quick off the wall. Um, uh, sorry, off the block. Quick around the wall. Got great underwater work. Um, and, it, you know, if uh, Jordan Sloan wants to compete, he's got to work those walls quick. He's got to get around the walls quick because um, Yuri's going to be a tough contender to beat. Yeah, he certainly is. Yeah, B-Final making their way out for this one. Sam Horrocks is in this one in lane one. He's uh, done pretty well to get into this 100 free B-Final. Brian O'Sullivan in lane seven as well. So you can sort of see the standard of the series that are only in the outside lanes of this B-Final. You realise how well some of them have swum. The reason why Jack McMillan and David Thompson are in lanes four and five they were the slowest of the internationals. They were still very, very quick this morning. But due to the nature of being an English national meet, we can only have two international guests in the main final. And those are, as I've mentioned, Jordan Sloan and Yuri Casil. Jack Millen and David Thompson both swam very, very quick this morning. Yep. Teammates as well, which is cool because it gives it an extra little bit of spice. You know, a little bit of a heads up where they know each other, they know how they train, they know what they do in and out of the pool. Yeah, so I, don't know. I, 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 just, I, just, I just think there's something about beating your teammate, you know, I, I don't know, there's something extra about beating your teammate, you know, a little bit of bragging rights and, you know, it's, uh, so it makes it a little bit more spicy. It certainly does. All Irish battle in lanes four and five then in this B final for the men's 100 free as we go back to Jonathan Bell. Thank you for that as ever, Steve. And, uh, well start of the race those two not much splitting them at all you can see the aggression though on the arm strokes of David Thompson who is the eldest in the pool here at the age of 25 it's probably the most uh, swimmers we've had in a B final that are 20 and above only uh, three of the ten are below that and there are 18 year olds Joseph Page in lane three Jack McMillan in four and also Harry Stacey going in lane nine and it's uh, Jack McMillan now of banger in lane four who's really beginning to turn the screw he and David Thompson getting PBs earlier on today and Jack McMillan has done it again by 0.2 seconds to win that race David Thompson ultimately falling behind into fifth position it was really close towards the finish wasn't it Joseph Page in second for Hamilton Carl Chisholm of Stockport Metro is in third position and uh, James Oxbro up there as well so we'll uh, wait and find out how that shapes up in terms of the medals I think you know with the nature of so many in that being in the seniors I don't think they'll be back on the podium but it's all about the times you can get and a second opportunity really to swim an event like this even though you know you're probably not going to get a medal just another chance to chop away a few tenths of a second yeah that's it that's the, uh, that's the beauty of the B, the B finals it gives some swimmers the extra chance to come back again and most of the time swimmers swim faster in the final in the evening and uh, we've seen that here there so it gives them a good, another chance instead of just doing the heats and uh, not getting a chance to swim in the evening so here's the start list for the a final of this men's 100 meters freestyle it's going to be a great battle between sloan kissil and clog in the center of the pool And yeah, Yuri Casillas looked he's looked really good all weekend. He's got this, he sports this uh funky looking mustache. Let's see if he's still got him. Maybe maybe he'll have shaved it off for the final. Let's have a little look. Some sort of Christmas mustache going on. I don't know, I'm not sure what it is. Sometimes swimmers do that, you know, sometimes because you shave down for competition, swimmers like to shave their hair off because it makes you go a little bit quicker. Sometimes swimmers like to leave a little bit on just to say, you know, guys, I'm not fully shaved down here and I'm still swimming this quick. So maybe he's left that mustache on to make a little statement, make a little point that he's not fully shaved or rested. Or maybe that's just how he rolls. Well, it's quite the character, it seems, isn't he, uh, Yuri Kassil? Let's see how he gets on. It's, uh, I mean, this is one of them finals, really, where we're looking at the lineup, and there aren't too many English swimmers that have been on great form uh, that are lining up here. Thomas Howdell, who lines up in, in lane nine, managed to get this year uh, a time of 49.1 which does put him in the top 10 of the British swimmers and uh, the quickest on paper this year out of the English swimmers in this race but he wasn't quite 
at it this morning, really, when you compare those times. Uh, a couple of others, though, that maybe have got the potential of, of breaking up a little bit higher than that. Yep. Well, Thomas Howdle out there in lane nine. He's got a pretty pants lane, to be honest. Um, but we've already seen him swim so quick. He's, uh, he's just won that 50 metres backstroke, hasn't he? And he's uh, smashing his best time. Uh, not too far off the British record either, but he's, uh, he's swimming well. Um, backstroke specialist, really, but he's, uh, he's got a good sprint freestyle as well. So let's see if he can do some damage out there in lane nine. Callum Jarvis, a very experienced swimmer from the University of the Bath, representing Great Britain on uh, many occasions, picking up a gold medal at the European Championships. Uh, few months ago up in Glasgow as part of that 4 by 2 the freestyle relay team. You know, so he's, uh, he's picked up some Commonwealth medals as well. A bronze in 2014 in the tune of freestyle. So a very high pedigree. Yeah, the uh, British record for this certainly isn't below 30 seconds. <laughs> that is for sure. As it, uh, unfortunately, it's on the screen there. 45. 9-7 from Ben Proud almost three years ago. He has shaved his moustache off a bit. Look, he's shaved off the middle bit and he's just left two little sides and he's drawn a smiley face on his six-pack. This is some character. And, and you, I, I had a feeling like something would happen to that moustache in this final. And I, I just had a sneaky feeling. Let's see if he can back it up now. Let's see if he's smiling by the end of this race. Well, the good thing if he wins is we uh, may well get an interview from him. But we'll wait and see about that. It'll we'll be interesting to talk to him, wouldn't it, Yuri Kassil? It will. Great start from Jordan Sloan from Bangor. Really quick off the blocks. Look at his underwater work as well. Very nice. Superior swimming speed, though, from Yuri Kissel. You can see that swim speed of his is, is quick. And he's first to turn at the 50, 22.54. He's got this high turnover, hasn't he, Yuri Kissel? Really high turnover. Keeps that stroke rate the same the whole time. Doesn't seem to die off. His turns aren't the best, but he's just got this swim speed. It's blowing the rest of these guys out of the water. Good swim. PB of 46.79 coming into this. It's going to be close to that. He'll just be above it by seven hundredths of a second, but nevertheless, he'll win the race. 46.86. Second spot for Elliot Clogg of City of Sheffield. 48.04 for him. That is a new PB. And that is the uh, fastest time any English swimmer has managed to do this year. Jordan Sloan for Banger in third. Thomas Dean and Callan Jarvis, the two best swimmers up there as well. But Yuri Kassil managing to uh, reign supreme in that race, just as we suspected. He's not smiling, but he'll be content. Yeah, I think so. I think he'll have liked to have done the best time. Maybe if he just shaved the rest of that tash off, he might have just squeaked the best time there, you know, but... Looks like a character, doesn't he? Full of confidence, full of beans. Like a lot of the Canadians from so far. Backing it up, though. Well, that's the last of the individual men's races for the night. Tonight's session going by uh, really quickly indeed. And, uh, well, an opportunity now to look back on that A final and ahead to the final women's event of the evening, individual women's event, I may add, uh, as well, with uh, Steve and James, who's just joined him now. Yeah, thank you very much, Jonathan. It's, uh, it's a brilliant-looking race, this, isn't it? Particularly in, this, in the senior category. With 100 IM, we, we love this event, James. Mas myself as a fan, yourself as a former swimmer, short course exclusive, the 100 IM is obviously 25 metre length, but what makes this event so special? Is it just because it's so unique? I think because, yeah, it's just fun. I think it's just like one of those fun events, you know, it's not the Olympics, World Championship, Commonwealth Games, Pan Packs, it's like nothing like that. Um, it's just a fun event and it's one of those sprinty events where, you know, if if you're a sprint freestyle, sprint back, so you can give it a crack, you can have a go um, and, you know, usually breaststroke's the leg that lets people down, but it's a great event for people to just have a great bit of fun with. Yeah, it really is. And we're looking forward to, to watching some of our best swimmers go in this one. Most particularly, we're looking forward to watching one of the Canadians. Kayla Sanchez was unbelievably dominant in this race earlier on this morning. The only swimmer to go under a minute across yep. all of the women. And she's on again for another world junior record. It's worth pointing out, that these. it sounds almost, it sounds a little bit almost not much of a match as world junior record. It's only a junior record, yeah. but this is the quickest a 17-year-old member has ever gone. 
yeah. in this race, which is it's huge. Usually, I mean, I'm, I've been checking out the World Junior Record today. Usually, if you break a in the men's category as well, if you break a World Junior Record, you're up there in the seniors as well. It probably puts you easily within top ten seniors as well. That's how good a quality the Junior World Records are. So. When somebody gets a world junior record, don't take it lightly. It is a top, top quality world swim. Yeah, it really is. And we're really looking forward to this event. 100 IM for the girls. Kate Mills is leading the way in this B final. Madison Kemp and Tegan Drew, the two Plymouth Leander swimmers, are going to flank her in lanes three and five, respectively. And the A final will come up after that with uh, that wonderful... Canadian from Michaela Sanchez, and she's got company. Jane Brown and Emily Crane will not give that one up as we hand back to our race commentator for this B final and the A final following Jonathan Bell. Thank you very much. This should go by very quickly indeed. And I think one thing we were talking about last night, James, with this event with the men is you just haven't got that time really to show how dominant you are with your favoured stroke, but also not much time either for it to go wrong on your least favoured. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, breaststroke can still make a big difference. I mean, because breaststroke is the slowest stroke, it's the time that you spend... Uh, it's the stroke that you spend the most time on in the individual medley event, so it can still make a difference on this uh, 100 metres medley, but I mean, a lot of the time, a lot of this swimmers use it for fun. But you know what? It shows who the best sprinter, all round sprinter is. It's the event that shows who the best all round sprinter is. Well, currently going on to the uh, final turn there, it looks like it's coming courtesy of lane two, Alana Brokoven of Plymouth Leander. This is super stuff here from the 15 year old. It might be worth keeping an eye here on uh, the junior record time British record she'll be outside of that but still managing to get the best overall 10401 fantastic swim there you look at some of the uh, elder swimmers in the middle not being able to get close to that Tegan Drew second on 104.4 and Daisy Anderson of Tanit swim in third place nice swim from the youngster 101 inside of a PB there, Lana Brokoven, and uh, she will be delighted. Almost a bit startled as she looked up towards the scoreboard. Yeah, if you knock a second off, one whole second off your 100 metre personal best time, that is, that's, that's big. That's big, so she'll be really pleased. Again, training out, another swimmer's training out of Plymouth Leander Swimming Club. We've seen some good sprinters, we've seen some great fly swimmers this weekend from there. Now we've got a little IM specialist. So here we see then Kelly Sanchez once again in lane four. She's the only swimmer in this lineup that has managed to get under a minute, and we'd hope for some of the English ones to join her in that bracket as well. As for Marie O'Connor, she has pulled out today from this event and uh, she is the quickest British swimmer of the year, 58.35, set in Tokyo. I mean, we, we wondered a little bit if she wasn't here tonight, maybe because of being in Tokyo a month ago. It does take it out of you towards the end of a calendar year as well, that, and, and a bit of a disappointing day for yesterday, which we don't want to stress too much, but it opens it up for the rest of the pool now. You've got Emily Crane in there, who is the next fastest English swimmer uh, from 2018, and Jane Brown as well in lane five. She's the junior British record holder for this event. Yeah, looking forward to this one. We've got a uh, classy swimmer like Kayla Sanchez. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure to watch. I like to always go back to juniors. You know, if you're a junior out there and you're watching the stream and you're watching it on, uh, on poolside somewhere, you probably won't be able to hear me if you're on poolside, but all those that can hear me, keep an eye out on the technical abilities of Kayla Sanchez. Skills around the wall, the skills under the water. It's important to pay attention to these things. That's, this is how the, uh, the best in the world do it. Just having a, a look here at the record. Ricardo Iki, 57.75. You know, with the time that was set in the 2017 uh, Junior World Cup. And, I mean, it's doable for Kayla Sanchez. Maybe it's a bit harder than some of the other events she's managed to yeah. uh, succeed in. But, I mean, we like to hope. Yeah, I agree. She, um, she was two seconds off it this morning. How much she was holding back, I'm not sure. I think this is going to be the trickiest one out of the, uh, out of the four that she's tried. She's got three already. 
This fourth one could be the trickiest one, I think. See Siobhan's British record there, 57.59. Well, let's see how many of these swimmers can get under a minute for what would be, apart from Kayla Sanchez, the first time in their career in the women's 100m IMA final. Yeah, it's an important barrier to break in so many events. Long and short course. Getting under that minute. Just gives you, as a swimmer, just gives you such a confidence boost. It means you're going in the right direction. It means you're doing something right. Well, Sanchez has forgotten about that. She's looking to break the 58 marker and she's looking to get under that 57.75. Well, she's been matched on that start there by uh, Emily Crane in lane three of Loughborough University. But uh, again, I mean, we just wax lyrical about Kayla Sanchez on the turn. So far, Emily Crane keeping up alongside her. Yep. Nice backstroke from Kayla Sanchez, though. Her swimming speed is great as well. Nice back, that backstroke to breaststroke turn from Kayla Sanchez is superb. I mean, look at how much she takes out of Emily Crane on that backstroke. Emily, I mentioned this this morning, Emily Crane's backstroke to breaststroke turn is not right. She needs to change it um, and do it like Kayla Sanchez. Kayla Sanchez does it right. It's, I, I'm not going to go into the exact details right now. I'd, I'd be speaking all for the next hour about it. But it took a huge chunk out of the rest of the field. Kayla Sanchez coming home strong. Let's keep an eye on the clock. It's going to be so, so close. 58.24 for Kayla Sanchez. No world junior record, but a superb swimming dominating that 100 IM. Yeah, personal best for Kayla Sanchez. Half a second outside the junior world record. Amazing stuff from her. No wonder she's always smiling. Emily Crane of Loughborough University. She's agonizingly managed to get a PB and not managed to break the 60-second mark, but she wasn't far there, 1097. Athena Clayson next in, 102.67. And uh, Jane Brown unable to beat the time that got her the uh, junior British record of 101.31. But even if she managed to get that, it wouldn't have put her near Kayla Sanchez. The Canadian, again, top of the tree here in Sheffield 58 2 4 ever so close to a junior world record but it is a new PB for Kayla Sanchez it certainly is thank you very much Jonathan that is some swim from Kayla Sanchez doing it yet again not quite adding to the hat trick of world junior records but as we mentioned it's still a world junior record it's, it's not to be sniffed at going that close to it it's an incredible time yeah i think this is out of the four this was the one that she was going to struggle with the most uh 57 75 is, is is so quick but 58 2 4 yeah i mean it's great um she'll be i think she'll be really pleased it's like what a second and a half off her best time already she, she's she's smashing it this week yeah it certainly was pb coming into that was 59 75 which she swam this morning and we did yeah. think a little bit that she swam it a little bit slow in, in this morning's heat we thought we could see a little bit more and, and indeed yeah. we did it was yeah. 58 2 4 another second off 17 years old isn't necessarily so young for a female swimmer but it's still got a lot she's still got a lot of time on her side and yeah the world's an oyster at this point yeah especially with the sprinting I, I, I like to think that the sprint ladies can go a little bit older than maybe more of the distance um Lady. So, yeah, she's got loads of time, 17 years old. Um, but, I mean, she just looks so happy with us when it doesn't. She's so happy. I mean, PB this morning, uh, 59.75, and then just destroys it in the evening by a good second and a half. I mean, this girl's, this girl's off. And she's got this busy program, hasn't she, where she's been breaking these, re these records over, over, you know, over the last two days. Yeah. I think this morning in the 100 IM, she just thought, I'm just going to relax a little bit now. I don't need to keep smashing these races. Otherwise, I'm just going to drive myself into the ground. So tonight, she could hit it hard and go. 58.2. Yeah, nice we're one. hoping to hear from Kayla very shortly as well, but it does round off the individual races this evening, James. What's been the standout performance from you? Because that's Ooh. not an easy question to answer, I I've not, not really thought about this. Um, oh God, I mean, I, I just I love the way James Guy swims. I'm going to keep going on about it, but I do love the way James Guy swims then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Worried he's got you on a retainer. I, I'm not even sure you put... I'm, I'm going to say Mary, uh, Marie Wattle. I mean, Marie Wattle for me, I, I love her butterfly. Um, just the, this long... Range, oh, I could pick the breaststroke. I could pick the breaststroke girls as well. Can I? I'm going to go with Marie Wattle. She's got this long, beautiful, rangy butterfly that I really like to watch. Um, just dominates the race. Um, technically superb. I love the undulation in a butterfly as well. So I'll, I'll go with Marie Wattle. She looks great tonight.
Well, one of our main swimmers tonight, but one of our star swimmers of the meet has not been one of our English or indeed British swimmers. It's been one of our international guests. It's been a pleasure to watch her race. I'm delighted to say Kayla Sanchez joins us now from the poolside. <laughs> Kayla, first of all, a huge congratulations. What a meet it has been. You've not stopped smiling the whole way through this meet, we've noticed. I'm guessing you must be feeling pretty happy with how you're swimming. Yeah, it's really exciting to come here and just race really well and meet new people and stuff. So I've been having a good time. Yeah, something that we've been asked a lot is, uh, that I've been asked is, what's it like competing in a, a, a new pool in a different country? Are you scared, excited? How are you feeling? Uh, I came to this pool last year, so the nerves from kind of going overseas is kind of settled. So I've kind of been focusing on having fun and just being excited to race, yeah. Did you, it, uh, we've got a schedule over here where December's a really busy training period. Is it similar for you over there? Because you're swimming so fast. Yeah, so we've been training pretty hard coming into this meet, but uh, our co my coach, Ben, he's kind of given us some time to prepare for racing here and just having fun. Well, you certainly seem to be doing that. Three world junior records already in this meet. Did you expect that coming into it? Because it must be something you've got half an eye on when you're swimming that quickly. Uh, I didn't really expect it. I didn't really have any expectations coming to this meet. Uh, but putting together everything we've worked on so far this past season and it's kind of just come together for me so it's exciting yeah well you, um, you, you seem full of confidence is that is <laughs> it, when, when you've got a confident swimmer like yourself does that kind of help um, with swimming faster and faster uh, I think getting more experience and uh, meeting new people sorry uh, training in new places and things like that it kind of helps with the confidence piece uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fine. Kayla, we know you've been racing so hard. We'll let you go and get your breath back. Congratulations Thanks. on a wonderful meet so far. Thank well, you so much. I can't wait to watch you tomorrow. Thank you so much, Kayla Sanchez. Well, uh, what an incredible swimmer. And it's lovely to see, actually, yeah. that she maintains that smile. It's not, yeah. a, it's not an act. It's, it, she yeah. is genuinely loving being here, being around new people. Oh, you can see that. You can see that. I mean, we, uh, we, we both noticed it from day one, didn't we? With the, you know, watching on pulse. I was like, the first thing I noticed with her is the way when she walks behind the block she's smiling and she's you know relaxed and shaking her arms and she's so happy and after the racing she's like hugging the different swimmers you know the, the, the British girls um, and you can see that you can see it in the interview as well she's so happy she's so confident and you, you could see that in her swimming ability as well very very special swimmer is Kayla Sanchez that might be a name you'll hear a lot of in swimming circles over the next three or four years yeah. I dare say and uh, the smiley face certainly seems to be a thing for the Toronto guys because mm. they've got their we had Casil with it on his uh, on his six pack just before that you notice Kayla swims with it on her hat it, it yeah. seems to be a bit of a mood in the in the Canadian camp yeah. and why not you know, the, the, the swimming so quick we saw uh, Yuri Casil with that moustache. I knew he was going to do something with that, that moustache. <laughs> now, because I've seen, I mean, some swimmers like to do, they like to shave, they like to have facial hair or bodily hair, and they like to kind of shave it off in parts. And I knew he was going to do something in the final with that moustache. You can see it, it shaved off the middle and left two little, I don't even know what to call them, two little <laughs> patches on the side of his uh, on the side of his lips. Left uh, the handles and the handlebar on. Well, yeah, this is it. <laughs> if it had took him off, he might have gone a bit quicker. And they had that nice smiley face. I mean, that just shows the atmosphere in this in this Canadian team. They, 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 they've come here with great positivity they come here with loads of confidence and it's been um it's been and, and, and the proofs in the pudding they've been swimming fast as well yeah and it's interesting you mentioned this yesterday but first joining us today the coach the brit someone who you know ben titley yes we know ben very well he used to be a british swimming coach over here at look um he coached likes of you know um, fran halsall uh, lizzie simmons um and it, you know he's 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 a fantastic coach and he's he's gone over to canada and he's making the next generation of top top swimmers um, and it just shows what a great coach is yeah it really does well it's time to focus now on the relays Loughborough were quickest through in this one it's the 4x50 freestyle team event here Loughborough quickest through in lane 4 Plymouth Leander and Banger from Ireland will give them a fairly decent race though we do expect over to our race commentator Jonathan Bell. Thank you, Steve. Penultimate race of the night, then, and uh, well, every night's going to end on a relay. Tomorrow's a little bit different, actually, with the Challenge 68 final, but we're not going to start explaining that now. You'll have to tune in tomorrow evening and find out exactly what that entails, but it's one not to be missed. Neither is this. All the swimmers giving it all they have got. 
and Loughborough University with such a strong team starting very firmly indeed out in front after the first leg and changing over at 0.59 seconds ahead of Banger who are the nearest rivals in lane five. East Leeds started pretty decently as well there are Masters Club coming here to the Steel City for this weekend and uh, Maybe you could argue they've been a little bit overlooked in that respect, but they're up towards the front four. Loughborough, though, no surprise at all where they are. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 these guys are going to be the ones to beat for sure. We've got some superior um, senior athletes, especially the senior athletes. Uh, you know, a lot of people love to go to Loughborough for the university, and uh, it's a great setup over there. A little bit of challenge here coming from Bangor, actually. They're starting to reel maybe Loughborough in, and this could make for a very exciting last 50. We can see here the Bangor boys starting to come back they are it was just over half a second the split there at the previous turn at this one not too dissimilar either as they come crashing in now some real pace from Loughborough in lane four and Banger in five as well I think Loughborough are going to hold on here but it's not as comfortable as they may have liked it to be 127-71 is enough for them to finish top Banger in second and East lead anchoring that top trio there 130.34 and uh, well great pursuit from Banger towards the end yeah, they, showed, they showed some great grit there didn't they Banger to uh, to try and come back at uh, Loughborough but Loughborough Supreme Got some, uh, you can see the, in the pictures there some big strong lads and a, uh, a nice bronze, me bronze medal for East Leeds as well out there in lane 7 yeah that may be promoted actually to uh, a silver with Banger being one of the uh, invitational sides, so they'll get a commemorative. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. A little bit of a DQ from Totnes, which is a bit of a shame. Probably a relay takeover. It is quite common. I mean, I've been going on about relay takeovers as well all last night, about how some of them were so slow. And it's, it can be a little bit painful to watch sometimes. You've got to have these quick takeovers. It's, you've got to start moving before the swimmer touches the wall. And, it, and it's practice, OK? Anyone out there, it is practice. You've got to be able to do this in training um, and get it right in training, get your coach to video it and watch it back and see how close you are to uh, the takeovers. But good swim from Loughborough University, Bangor and then East Leeds. And as you see there, that uh, DQ from Totnes and uh, just talking about that, that DQ there, uh, if, if it is a changeover, uh, generally speaking, because this is such a, a shorter relay with a short course, it's done like the blink of an eye. The adrenaline must be heightened twofold compared to a, to a long course. And, and so maybe mistakes like that are more likely to happen. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, 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 yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's, it, it's just a mistake. I mean, it's like you say, I think what it is is the adrenaline. They're so keen to get off the blocks and get away because sometimes when you're behind, you can see a team is touching half a yard in front of you. You want to get away at the same time, don't you? But you can't. You've got to wait for that swimmer to make, you know, make sure they touch the wall. So, yeah, they probably just went a little bit early, got a little bit keen, um, which is a shame. It happens, um, but it's practice. You, you, it's like anything else in the world of sport. If you want to perfect it, you've got to practice it and practice it and practice it. Get those, master those takeovers, you've got to practice it a million times. It's the final race of the night, and it's the women's 4x50 freestyle relay. Uh, Hamilton in zero, we've got Borough of Waltham Forest, City of Norwich, Plymouth Leander, and down the centre, Loughborough University, Mount Kelly, and then uh, towards the far side of the pool, Levington, Tadcaster, Nova Centurion and Trafford. I mean, you, you get a few teams in there that maybe we haven't seen too many of this uh, weekend so far, such as Levington in six, Tadcaster in seven and, and Trafford in nine. And they've got a team together and this is their race really, put it, putting their wits against the likes of Loughborough, Plymouth and Mount Kelly and, and giving it a good go and having some fun. Give it a good go, you said it right there. Give it a good go, give it a good crack. Get stuck in. This is what these Mount Kelly ladies have been doing. They won the medal last night in the medley relay. They're looking for this freestyle reel as well, and they're just getting stuck in, and they're having a great weekend so far. I think they are going to be too strong. Plymouth, they always put a good team together as well. But with some of these Loughborough big guns out, it's going to be tough for anyone to, uh, to take this gold medal away from Loughborough University. Well, Loughborough hoping to do a double in the men's, and now the women's 4x50 freestyle relay final. Well, of course, we have in the individual races A and B finals, so it's sort of 
takes away that competitive edge in terms of a straight shootout for medals, but we've got that in the relays here, and this really is uh, love for us to lose, you would suspect, but again, as we say, those teams around them, they're going to give it their best shot and see if they can get on the podium. Yeah, can you recognise that freestyle as well? That's Wattle's freestyle, that is, because you can see a bit of that butterfly that she's got. She's just won that 100-metre butterfly, and Wattle looking really strong in that first 50. Great sprinter, giving look for a big lead already, 24-5 down that 50. Either side of them, they've got uh, Mount Kelly currently second, Plymouth Leander in third. Good start as well, you see the orange cap on the near side there, that's Hamilton in lane zero and they've been flying in the first half of this one it's their second half as strong as their first we'll wait and find out but Loughborough look at that 1.86 there fantastic changeover from them uh, difficult work for Mount Kelly to turn this around it is indeed but Mount Kelly swing really well holding off Plum Fleander as well I know they, they come into this final second fastest so you, you, you could almost but you, you just don't know what swimmers have been changed from the heats to the final, do you? Great swimming from the outside lane, isn't it? Yeah, you mentioned them, Hamilton, UAE. Hamilton Aquatics are looking good. Can they hold off Plymouth Leander? Great turn up, takeover by Plymouth, though. Can they hold off Plymouth Leander for an, a wonderful bronze medal in that outside lane? They are turning third still. There's no doubt who the winner's going to be, though, is there? I mean, look at the university from start to finish. Marie Wattle setting them up. Oh, Kelly swimming so well. Plymouth coming back though. This is a great battle for bronze. Look at this. Lane zero and lane three. This is a great swim from Hamilton if they can get it. And they have. Wonderful outside swim. Let's see the reaction from them girls. I'd, I'd love to see a bit more of a reaction. Well, there's hooks being traded by those in the orange caps in lane zero. Oh, and hand blocks, yeah. There's, uh, looking at the difference there. That's four and a half seconds up from this morning and okay you can change personnel and maybe alterate the yeah. team a wee bit but that is still sizable yeah to do that from lane zero as well that is tricky in a relay sometimes on a relay you know because the waves are so big there's loads of splashing from the diving and you're out there in lane zero you don't kind of get all that stuff you get kind of hidden and out of the way and Hamilton UA just swam their own thing there and absolutely smashed it good job big shout out to Mount Kelly as well picking up another silver medal uh, those, these, these guys and girls in this club have, uh, have started so well. Yeah, Plymouth now slouches, but ousted by Hamilton in the top three. Mount Kelly then sitting with second, and Loughborough University have managed to do the double-double. They did it last night in the relays, and they've done it again tonight as well. A golden duo for them to round off this evening at the Swim England National Winter Championship 2018, day number two. Thank you ever so much, Jonathan, for your commentary this evening. Been a pleasure as ever to have you with us. Medal ceremony is on the way next, ladies and gentlemen. But a chance in the meantime for myself and James here to reflect on what's been an incredible night swimming once again. Day two has really delivered. We wondered with the, the quality and the drama that we saw on day one whether day two could really fit the billing. But I think it, it really has. There has been yep. some fantastic swimming tonight. Yeah, some awesome swimming, hasn't it? Um, we've seen a British record tonight, haven't we, as well? Um, We've seen, it's just been amazing. I mean, I, I, just, I can't believe how quick the meet's been. Yeah. It's, it's been so surprising, and especially from the seniors as well. I mean, I would always imagine the juniors would come here and aim to do personal best times. Um, but the, the seniors have really kind of stepped up and they've, uh, they've taken this by the scruff of the neck and they've, they've, they've swam really well. Really impressed with Holly Hibbert as well, going under four minutes for the first time. Obviously, a little bit of a personal connection there um, with Stockport Metro. But yeah, so really pleased for her, and it's been a fantastic night swimming. Yeah, it really has. It, uh, that's really summed it up. But we'll just uh, running through what we've what we've seen. If you are just joining us here on the BBC, Toby Robinson kicked things off. Feels like a long time ago now it in does, that 1500 yes. meter final with a fantastic swim from him. Second race of the night, world junior record. How do you like it, Kayla Sanchez? And she didn't even win the race. We've got to put some yep. put something out there for Anna Hopkin as well, who is yep. magnificent in winning that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we talked about the world junior records being. If you do a world junior record, you are up there in the world. So for Anna Hopkin to to win that and, and when it comes to a while yeah well. when it comfortably Anna Hopkin great skills I mean we talked about Kayla Sanchez having great starts and turns Anna Hopkin matched her if not was a little bit better so Anna Hopkin um, shown fantastic form fantastic skills great 50 freestyle very impressed yeah, she was absolutely superb. Wins as well for James Wilby, Chloe Golding, Max yep. Litchfield going close to the British record, but not quite, but a big personal best for yep. him on, on the comeback trail for yep. Max. Marie Wattle has been one of the stars of the show. She just anchored the relay for Loughra. Those medals are going to be presented fairly soon. And uh, we're going to see the medals now for our presentation, which is the 200-meter butterfly. 
James Guy about to get his medal. You can see him there. So quite a few medals to be presented, what with having juniors, commemoratives, and Dean Court, and of course the Open Medals are uh, our presentations team here are really having to work quite hard. And uh, the uh, front titles are about to be awarded. James Hart is going to pick himself up a junior medal. He's from Plymouth Leander. Young man next to him, Marcus Tambling from Hamilton UAE. He's going to get a commemorative junior bronze. He's uh, a little bit confused there. Oh yeah, Matthew's like, this is me? Yeah, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Poor Marcus Tambling. He's supposed to walk away with the bronze. There. Yeah, he's like, I'm supposed to walk away with the bronze, I'll take this one. This <laughs> there we go. There we go. He gets, his, he gets his moment eventually. It's the main thing. Styled it out, maybe. A lot of bronze medals there, isn't there? There is, yeah. Junior, senior, and commemorative. Okay. Ruben Vizda picking up his medal. Junior Silver for him, 2 minutes, 0.15 for Ruben Vizzer in that B final. It's really, really good, so close to getting just under that 2, me, uh, two minute barrier. Silver medal going to Thomas Beely for Plymouth Leander there as well. But a huge, huge congratulations to this young man here. He looks a star of the future, doesn't he? Edward Mildred, wowee, what a swim, competed in lane six is 15 years of age in the final alongside James Guy junior gold and a British junior record to boot as well he's yep. still just 15 years of age 156 you underneath 156 yeah 156.83 at 15 hello <laughs> hello <laughs> he could be a real star of the future seen him on this podium plenty of times well of course you were, you're used to seeing James Guy with a gold medal around his neck at this sort yeah, of level yeah standard very very difficult for him to get beat such is his level but it was a very professional swim for me and again and he was chuffed at the end if you, yeah. if you see him at the end he slapped the water he smashed the water slammed his goggles down I mean this is what it means to I mean James Guy when he races he, he loves it he loves racing. He he he's trains never one to, to hide race. his emotion either, is he? He, no. he will let you know if he's which happy. Which is great. I mean, I, to, I think we want to see that. We want to see that as, a, as as spectators. We want to see the emotion. I mean, I'd love to see more of it from more of the athletes. But James Guy is one that you know at the end of a race if he's happy You're or sad. Big slap of that water. Yeah, yeah. And he, when he went that 152 zero, he smashed the water with his goggles, slapped it with his hand, and basically said, "Yes, I'm happy. I'm happy." It's great to see. It's it terrific. Great to see. Yeah. We just need to mention Edward Mildred again because yeah, we've yeah, seen yeah, him yeah. plenty of times on the top of this podium. He is competing there with some of the best swimmers in the country. And how, what is that like as a young swimmer? He is just 15 years of age, yeah. coming through at Northampton. They've got a brilliant setup there. He's coached by Jackie down there. He does such a fantastic job. Yep. What is that like as a youngster to battle away against, well, James Guy, one of the best in the world, never mind yeah. the country? Well, it's great. I mean, I think for him, he'll just, he just soaked up the moment. I think he'll just thought, you know what, I'm in the pool. James Guy, one of the greatest swimmers on the planet. Why not have a go? And I think I think that spurred him on to do this this 156.8 and break that British junior record. I mean that, that it spurred him on, and it's it's great to see for the from the young man. It, he wasn't daunted by it. He did the best time in that final, That's which is just. which is which is great to see. British junior record falling for Edward Mildred. This is the presentation for the women's 400 free. Yeah, bronze medal for the juniors going to Maisie Elliott from the City of Leicester. On the right of your shot there, Polly Holden picking up the bronze for the seniors from Nova Centurion. Mia Slevin gets the junior silver. She was first place in the B final in the 400. So Freya Coleman will pick up the gold in that one. Abby Wood getting the open silver. She gave Holly Hibbert a decent ride in that final, stuck with her for long periods. Yeah, she did a big PB as well, didn't she? First the best 403. Yeah. So Abby Woods having a top weekend so far as well. No stopping this young lady though. Holly Hibbert has been a force to be reckoned with yeah. over the 400 for a little while now, and it's it's wonderful to see her swimming so so well. You know, got the uh, got 200, got sorry the 400 with freestyle. She was bronze at the European Championships yep. earlier this year, and well 400 silver at the Commonwealth, Commonwealth this year as well. Silver, yeah. So she is such a talent over this distance, and. Yep. You spoke to me a little bit yesterday when she from the 800 got the gold there. Yep. She's starting to narrow it down and focus on that 400 metres. Yeah. Just how good can she be? Uh, she can be better. She, she wants to be better. 
Um, she's probably going to have to do that long course now, which is sounds like a hell of a task, doesn't it? And it is a hell of a task. But when you've got the likes of Casey Ledecky who are going 354 or whatever she's going, which is just ridiculously crazy, if she wants to win a medal in Tokyo, and that's what she wants to do, I mean, there's no she doesn't want to come fourth, she wants to win a medal, she's going to have to go around the four minute, maybe just dip under that four minute marker. So to do it short course now is going to give her that confidence in this hard training period, like we keep talking about, to do a massive personal best time like that, gives her that confidence to push on for the long course season to uh, get under that four minutes long course. And it's so nice as well for, for us here as, as British swimming fans to be able to have that replacement for Jazz Carlin after she stepped away from the sport yep. after Rio 2016. Ready-made replacement, seemingly, in Holly Hibbert. I hope so. I hope so. We've had a good history of the 400 freestyle women. Um, you know, like, say, Jazz Carlin picking up that silver uh, in Rio. We had Becky Adlington winning the gold and Joe Jackson getting the bronze in Beijing. So um, we've got a great history about it. Um, and if and Becky is it, won is the it bronze realistic to potentially look at a, a medal for Holly at Tokyo? Uh, it has to be. I mean, it has to be. How, how old's Holly now? Holly now? She's 18, so she'll be 20, just under 20. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. Why not? Optimism. Yeah, that's what we like. Well, I mean, I mean, Casey like. Ledecky's the same age, yeah. isn't she? So, I mean, you know, maybe a year, a year older. How old is Kate? Like she was, she was 15 in 2012. So that was six years ago. Yeah, she's 21. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's only a couple of years older. Than her. Yeah, now, now's the time. I mean, now's, now's the time to crack on, um, and she could be in a prime. Be Rebecca Adlington, when she was 19 in 2008. That she was in her prime. They, they would, when she won that, that um, she ever swam. yeah, when she broke that world record in the 800 and won gold, that's the fastest she ever swam at 19 years old. Holly's about that age now. Now's the time to do it. Yeah, we wish her all yes. the best with that. Big year next year for Holly here, but World Championship year, don't forget as well, which is so exciting, especially the year before an Olympics. That World yeah. Championships will mean so much to so many swimmers because it's almost like jostling for position, isn't it? It's almost like the heat to the Olympics, yep. in, in a sense. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, here I am. This is what I'm about. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, you want to kind of stamp your marker at the World Championships before the Olympic Games, you know, you don't want to... I mean, it, it's interesting because it can work both ways. Uh, again, I'm going to go back to Rebecca Adlington. Why not? You know, greatest distance freestyle we've ever had. But um, before, the year before, in 2007, we went to Melbourne for the World Championship. Becky came like 20-something. I think she came like 27th. So she was way down, but she was almost hidden there then. She was almost hidden. And then that, for that year, 2007, 2008, she could, in the background, hit those sets, work that training, drop that time. And when she got to 2008, it was people like, oh, who's this? So there is that kind of advantage as well. But I mean, the, yeah, of course, the year before, you want to hit it hard. You want to do really well at that World Championship. Set yourself up for that Olympic Games. Yeah, it's a, it's a massive couple of years in the swimming calendar. We don't need to over egg it. World Championships and Olympics in two consecutive years. Enough is really spoken about there. Absolutely. It's been a it's been a good year as well this year, 2018, with the Commonwealth Games and the European Championships. We've seen so many of our swimmers do so well, and Holly is certainly one of those. We now move on to our next presentation out out on the uh, on the stage here. And, uh, some uh, some boys making their way very slowly <laughs> behind the, I mean, I the podiums. And this is the uh, this is the 100 meter freestyle says, Come on, presentations. There's going to be a few medals in this one as well because there's a lot of commemoratives to dish out. The juniors is nice and simple. Janie Hands picks himself up a junior bronze medal for Sydney Milton Keynes. And uh, a uh, bronze medal goes away with Count Jarvis from Bath University as well. Just got engaged to uh, the XGB Butterfly Swimmer Gemma Lowe. So congratulations to those two. Wish them all the best for the future. And look who else is on the podium again, Edward Mildred. Oh, here he comes again. He is going to be a deadly swimmer in a couple of years, isn't he? No really looking forward to seeing how he's, he's going to go. Silver on this occasion for the juniors for Edward Mildred. And uh, a couple of medals being dished out here. One for the commemorative silver to bangers Jordan Sloan in the middle of his shot there. And Thomas Dean gets the silver for the English representing Bath University. A big tall figure of Thomas Dean. The uh, junior gold goes to Jacob Whittle. He's a very, very good swimmer, uh, youngster down at Davencio. And here's your, here's your man, Yuri Casil, getting yeah. the commemorative goal. I wonder if he'll start a new trend or fashion with that moustache or lack of. I'm, I'm going to say no. <laughs> I'm going to say no. Ah, he's just having a bit of fun, isn't he? Why not? He's having a bit of fun. And we used to do some silly stuff when we were, when we were younger as well. Bleach your eyes, bleach my hair blonde, thinking I was Eminem or something. <laughs> Yeah, we used to do some silly things, and why not? But he's uh, he's had a great weekend so far, hasn't he? He has indeed. Gold medal conference. there going to Elliot Clogg, the man in the red, on the top of the podium. City of Sheffield, Summer, still just 19, Elliot Clogg, and he gets the national title. It's a lovely moment for him, Elliot. 
and uh, still a couple more presentations to come, including those for the relay as well. Looking ahead to, to day three, James, yes. we, um, we're going to see a couple of rather interesting events. We're more on that tomorrow. You're going to have to tune in for yep. that one, ladies and gents. 20 past four, BBC Sport. You're not going to want to miss it. Just trust us on that. Challenge 68 is uh, the title oh, this, of the event, yes. and it's going to be so much fun. Something, Don't miss that. Yeah, well, we're but, mixing it up, aren't we? Yeah, but in terms of the raw swimming, a lot of pressure on day three to live up to the first two. It's been incredible. Yeah, and, and I've noticed a little bit today, especially with the senior swimmers, um, if we go back to day one, they were hitting those heats so hard and then hitting the final hard today. And just today, we saw a little bit more of the tactics coming in. We saw James Guy easing up. I think uh, Kayla Sanchez was easing up a little bit in the heats uh, this morning on that 100 metres medley, just to conserve a little bit of energy. I expect it more tomorrow as well. As these senior athletes, you know, are hitting these uh, events really, really hard, they're just going to start getting more tired. The legs are going to start feeling a little bit heavier. I think in the morning tomorrow, we might see a lot more tactics being played from those senior swimmers. The juniors, I think, will still be hitting it hard. You know, they're young. They've, they've, they can keep going all day, these juniors, you know. <laughs> no, but I think the juniors will still be hitting hard. But with the seniors, I think um, we're going to see some tactics in the morning and then ready for the evening, and they'll hit it hard again. Yeah, really looking forward to that one indeed. Still got a couple of medals to present. The Women's 100 IM is coming up soon as Kayla Sanchez is going to pick up another commemorative gold medal in that one. Yep. No great surprise how wonderful she has been at this meet. Looking forward to seeing if she can round it off in style tomorrow. Yep. Interesting to see if we get the Canadians in Challenge 68, you know. Be pretty good fun, wouldn't it? Well, can we give too much away right now? Because there's an age limit? It looks like we're, we're just about to start our next it. ceremony, so I, th I don't think we've got the time to, to okay. fully brief yeah, you've got the to audience tomorrow. Yeah. You're gonna have to I hope wait. so. I mean, I, of course, I hope so. Yeah, you're going to have to promise... Trust us here. We yeah. promise you it's going to be worth tuning in yeah, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next medal ceremony is, uh, is just about to be started yeah. over my shoulder. So we can cut to that very, very shortly as uh, Kayla Sanchez is indeed going to pick up her commemorative gold medal. What a fantastic swim it was from Kayla as well. And yeah. if this feels like we're overemphasizing the point here with Kayla Sanchez, there's good reason for that. This is, this is a real breakthrough meet. She's got three junior world records. Three. Yeah. I know. That's yeah. that is incredible. Yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, I like I liked her interview. She was kind of she had that kind of shyness oh, about her. Smiling again on the podium as well. Yeah, of course she did. She's got that kind of that shyness about her, but you know, and that humbleness about her as well, wasn't she? When she was being interviewed, she kind of you know it's like still just 17, not used to being interviewed that much. But you know, she but yeah, when she stands behind the blocks and when she races, she's just this this, this force and. Uh, She's it almost, gonna, she's it almost just going to grow and grow over the next few years. You almost forget, don't you, that when someone like Kayla Sanchez, who is just 17, gets out of the water and starts speaking to you, yeah. that she's actually 17 because you yeah. see her in the water and she's a titan. You know, she's yeah. up there with anyone. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And uh, you know, she's probably been used to being interviewed up in, you know, down in down in up in Canada. <laughs> and then she comes over here. And she's got these two British boys with our funny accents <laughs> asking yeah. weird questions. She's, uh, she's been fantastic, and I'm sure she's going to want to smash it tomorrow as well. So we've just not seen... the rest of these guys. Yeah, not at all. We've just seen it. Daniela Cogswell pick up a commemorative bronze in the juniors. And uh, junior silver going to Ella Chown from Swim Bournemouth. Commemorative silver going to Anna Morgan from Hamilton UAE as well. Good job, so, uh, Good job ladies. So from Mount Kelly there, Athena Clayson picking up her senior medal there. So the senior silver. Emily Crane is about to pick up a gold. As we also see medals handing out left, right and centre. That's Lana Brokhoven getting that one. 104.01 the time for Lana Brokhoven. And uh, Rosie Morgan picking up a commemorative junior cold as well. She's Hamilton UAE 103.21. Kayla Sanchez gets the commemorative gold. She was magnificent. 58 point two four and uh, it's worth pointing out as well that is so so fast a good two and a half seconds quicker than second who was Emily Crane will pick up the national title yeah we've already seen this weekend how quick Emily Crane is as a sprinter and she was made almost to look slow that was how quick the swim was from Kayla Sanchez yeah but uh, you see the ladies there pick up their gold medals and a big beaming smile on the face of Kayla Sanchez as they usually tends to be. We've not seen her without one over the course of this meet and, uh, and well she might as well. 
Yeah. So yeah, we've still got a couple more ceremonies to come for the relays, but it's uh, worth pointing out, we've still got another swim I want to talk a little bit more about. Yeah. And I know you do as well. We, we saw GB record tonight, and yeah. not just a junior record, which we've seen a couple of. We've seen, you know, the likes of Edward Mildred has done some incredible things on the junior scene, but we saw a senior British record go tonight, yeah. Imogen Clark. Utterly magnificent. Yeah, I mean, swim of the night. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to switch to Imogen Clark, actually. <laughs> I'd, you know, I hadn't forgotten. I've, I'd, I'd written it down here, but Imogen Clark, Clark broke the British record in this uh, in this 50 meters breaststroke. Um, unbelievable swim. Yeah, great swim. And she was amazing last night. Um, she could have been the swimmer of the night last night as well. Um, so I'm switching it for Marie Wattle. Sorry, Marie, um, to Imogen Clark, uh, British record 50. And she was so dominant in that 100 last night. I loved the way she swam it last night. She talked to, to uh, with us in the interview um, of how she had to go out quick. She had to go out, she was a sprint, she was 50, so she had to go out strong. Um, and I just love that. I loved how she kind of just blew everyone out of the water last night in that 100 down that first 50 and held strong down the back 50 metres as well, um, showing great character, great determination, great technique as well, which is, which is something that I love to see. And in this 50 today, she just she just killed it. She just smashed it. Um, and she's fantastic. Congratulations to Imogen. Yeah, she was absolutely magnificent. And it's broken a record that she's had herself. It was her own record, but for two years, which two is years. quite a long time to have a personal yeah. best at the age that Imogen's at. She's still quite young yeah. so it was, it's lovely to see her almost return to those sort of heights because sometimes yeah. when you see a young swimmer like she was at the time go like that and then not really live up to the heights the year after you yeah. sometimes wonder oh have they, have they peaked have they plateaued maybe and but yeah, great think, to see her come back yeah you think about this yourself as well as a swimmer I'm sure because she did it two years ago when she was so much younger two years later she's probably scratching her head thinking oh, how am I not going quicker here? Like, what's, what am I doing to be wrong? Am I out of trade? You know, so she'll be questioning herself over the last couple of years, perhaps. So to do that tonight, it'll be a massive relief for Imogen Clark. That, that, that's why it's a big swim. She'll be uh, really chuffed. We're about to see a lot of medals handed out uh, at the podium here, because we've got a couple of commemorative ones as well. And we're into the men's relays. Plymouth Leander getting their bronze medals in the English Open Championships. So Eduardo Valsecchi, Reed Jones, Filippo Coacci, and Freddie Clampett picking up their medals and well earned they were as well. East Leeds are going to get the silver medal and uh, worth pointing out as well, these guys are a Masters team. They were impressive. I was so chuffed for these guys. I think they were in one of the outside lanes, weren't they, as well, East Leeds. Um, they, I, yeah, I was really impressed. Really impressed with East Leeds. Yeah, Alistair Crawford, Should've Ben Taylor-Walsh, Joseph yeah, Sadio yeah, yeah. and Ryan yeah, Flanagan swimmers who will come to this event will see all these youngsters and their sprints and their speed and their universities and think no we are east leeds we are yeah. masters and we're going to give you a go yeah, i guarantee these guys just train for this 50. they'll just train specifically for this 50 relay which is cool i mean that's the, that's you know that's that's their that's their that's their joy that's their happiness that's what they want to do they, they love being part of this team as well don't they? you can see the uh, they've got a real closeness about them and easily to pick up a national medal is superb. Well done, boys. Yeah, terrific work from the uh, from the old guard of, e of East Leeds. They, they didn't look that old. <laughs> you can be a master swimmer from like 18 years old, you know, so maybe. Yeah, officially, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're going to see some commemorative uh, silvers handed out here to. Uh, oh, looks like the Banger guys, I think. Commemorative, commemorative silver, yeah. It should be commemorative gold for Banger, but we'll. Uh, it looks like they are getting gold medals. So yeah, commemorative gold for Banger indeed. Jack McMillan, Jordan Sloan, David Thompson, and Curtis Coulter, and Loughborough picking up the win. They were brilliant. Tom Fannon leading them out, which is always such a good way to start on a freestyle, isn't it? Miles McKenzie, Brian O'Sullivan, and James Oxborough on the anchor for Loughborough. Yeah, Tom Fannon leading the way. We saw in the uh, ladies 4x50, Marie Watt leading it out. Usually in the relays, you put your fastest at the start or the end. The fastest two swimmers at the start and the end. So give you that bit of a lead and then finish strong as well. So no surprise, Fannon with a great start and great speed, putting him on the front end. Why not? Yeah, yes. he looks like Makes a really sense. dangerous swimmer, doesn't he? Because yeah. we've seen him come through 
in the young stages when he was at Plymouth Leander, another one off that famous sort of Plymouth sprinting conveyor belt they yeah. produced down there. He was almost, when he was a bit, of, bit, bit more of a youngster, he's obviously now at university now, more considered a senior, but yeah. when he was a junior, it was almost like Ben Proud 2.0. He came right. through exactly the same yeah. system, Plymouth Leander, built exactly the same way at the yeah. same age, and all of a sudden, Ben Proud himself was saying, yeah, Tom Fan has sort of been taking him under my wing, and yeah. he's the next me. Like, I, I really wish him yeah. all the best. And yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, ben Proud, maybe it depends on when you look at it specifically but quickest swimmer in the world yeah yeah ben's right up there he's in the top one two three in the world in the 53 and 50 fly uh so credit to plymouth i mean they've got a great program down there they i, I oh, you've been saying this weekend i keep thinking they're just sprinters they're not just sprinters because we've seen some fantastic 200 meter butterfly girls as well you know and it's uh, you know they've got a great program down there they have indeed yeah ben proud Can't, we haven't seen a lot of him of course over the course of this year on the national scene has been busy with Commonwealth and Europeans, been all big time as is his right, but we're looking yep. forward to seeing him go again and come next year, the World Championships. Yep. This this feels like it's his sort of time. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. I mean, he's he looks in fantastic uh, shape. He trains out in Turkey now. Um, if you look at Ben, he is a big, big lad. He is like it's amazing as actually well. to he's see like his growth. Sort of Greek. He's like some sort of Greek god, isn't he? Like, dun, 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 he's got the pecs and the, oh, it just looks like in fantastic shape. Unbelievable start as well. Springs so quickly off the blocks and the, the, that start to 50 meters is so quick from Ben Proud and uh, his swimming speed is rapid as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, big, big couple of years for Ben Proud. I really hope he does it. Yeah, he's, he's sort of threatened on the international stage yeah. so far without really taking that next step of what he's capable of, which is world and Olympic top medals. And that's that's where we want to see him in the next couple of years. As we take sure. a look at the, uh, the girls they're coming up to collect their medals. The final presentation of the evening here is that uh, we take a look at our medalists. It's going to be a busy podium <laughs> once again. Plymouth Leander picking up a bronze Hamilton. Uh, we'll get a commemorative silver as well. But uh, well, officially they've been awarded a commemorative bronze according to the venue here. Either way, they're getting a medal, Hamilton, and, and weren't they brilliant? Yeah, That's Victoria, Diona yeah, Pagelli, Daniela Cogswell, Rosie Morgan and Emily Peck. They uh, finished third in the race, just in front of Plymouth Leander. And uh, a really, really impressive swim from Hamilton an interesting concept you know all these swimmers are, are English swimmers but obviously going out to the UAE to, to go and swim and I mean this yeah. time of year especially you can't really knock it that can you I don't, I don't blame them at all and there's, there's, there's quite a few that go out there to this Hamilton uh, aquatics team and it's doing really really well and it sounds like it's a beautiful I've, I've never actually been to the pool myself I've got a couple of friends who went out there to coach and swim um, and it's just got it's got the setup where it's just the lifestyle the sounds so it was set up by a guy nice. that, that you nice. yeah it was set up by a guy that you know pretty well right yeah yeah a fellow called Chris Tidy he's the owner of Hamilton um, he was a and I, I even know what year he was born. He was born in 982 because it was the year above me. Um, <laughs> going through all the age groups and through on the junior trips. Um, Chris Taddy is a breaststroke specialist. He was a 100 200 meters breaststroker. Um, so he's gone over there and he's found a little uh, gap in the market and set up this Hamilton. And he teaches and coaches thousands of kids over there now. So he's doing very well and coaching some top swimmers as well. So something's going right over there. But uh, yeah, no, I've, I've heard the lifestyle is just, just, just so brilliant over there. And it's uh, just a lovely place to train. Shout out to Plymouth Leander who got the bronze medal in the Nationals. Laura Stevens, Tegan Drew, Sophie Freeman and Honey Osrin, the youngster, leading them back. This is Mount Kelly on your screens now. The silver medalists, Emily Haynes, Macy Lawrence, Athena Clayson and Georgina Dennis. They gave a pretty good go in this one, but ultimately no one was going to stop this Loughborough team. When you read the lineup, it's not a surprise to see why. Marie Wattle led them out and then Emily Barkley, Imogen Clark and Emily Crane. That is... A sprinting lineup at this sort of level to die for, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You line up against these guys, you're like, uh oh, <laughs> what we're we gonna do here? Especially with Marie Wattle leading the way. Big, tall, strong, powerful girl. Yeah, big smiles on the faces of the Loughborough team, and that seems a pretty fitting image to to close the night on. Really, it's been another fantastic evening here in Sheffield. It really has. We cannot emphasise enough how much fun we're having up in the studio. Yeah. We hope you guys are at home as well. We've got one more day of it to come tomorrow. We cannot wait for day three. As myself and James have alluded to, but we're not giving it too much away just yet. You're going to want to tune in tomorrow, about quarter past four, on the BBC Sport website and on the app. 
Challenge 68. That's all we're going to tell you. It should be an awful lot of fun. Day two has been brilliant. Day one was as well. I know you're going to be back for day three. For myself, from James, from Jonathan, and from the wrestling production team here in Sheffield at Ponds Forge, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a very good night. Good night.